So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being in the room on time. Uh, thank you for contributing uh, to, uh, to homework. Uh, I, I read uh, most of uh, uh, most of contributions, except those who were sent uh, in right before before the meeting, uh, because of commute uh, from the hotel to uh, to you and uh, facilities here. And um, so, what 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 are my um, uh, conclusions? Uh, that. Most probably, we will not be able to uh, finalize uh, completely uh, work on uh, theme, sub-themes, uh, and um, uh, uh, topics for uh, intersessional work uh, fully. Uh, but we certainly need to strive uh, to complete as much as we can and maybe uh, attempt to adopt kind of working titles uh, for the moment which would allow us to uh, proceed and then um, and then work uh, online uh, trying to reach a consensus or rough consensus uh, in the group and finalize the uh, uh, these topics uh, by the end of the year why it is so important because uh, once we are putting out call for proposals uh, that should contain uh, information about themes, sub-themes, because one, one of the criteria of evaluation is how the um, uh, proposed workshop uh, uh, fits in the uh, sort of framework of the meeting and how it corresponds uh, or resonates uh, with uh, sub-theme. Um, looking uh, and analyzing all different aspects uh, and uh, using my uh, prerogative of the chair, I would like to suggest a working title uh, for IGF 2015, uh, which in my view represents n maybe not a complete balance, but uh, is closest to possible balance, uh, addressing concerns of uh, n many MAG members. And that, that is uh, building trust trustworthy net for sustainable development. Uh, and then uh, we would need to uh, 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 work on uh, sub-themes. We would need to work for sub-themes. Again, there are uh, many, many proposals on the table. My personal preference would be go simple and uh, uh, revive uh, four major sub-themes that have been used uh, in, uh, in the past. Uh, but of course, uh, that was not uh, widely present in the, uh, in the discussion. Therefore, I would not uh, attempt at this moment uh, to uh, suggest any, uh, any further proposals. When it comes to uh, a theme for uh, intersessional work and topics for best uh, practices, uh, I felt that uh, ICC basis proposal uh, bringing uh, no poli policy menu for bringing next billion online uh, or uh, along the lines yeah. uh, was. Uh, one which could be supported uh, in principle by, by many. And um, on topics for best practice uh, forums, uh, I, th I think that the, the leading theme uh, came out was the gender and, and ICTs or, or, or internet. IXPs uh, were mentioned in a num number of, of, of suggestions. And um, and, and uh, we need to think uh, further uh, on other, other possible topics because out, out of the, uh, w apart from those two, uh, I didn't really uh, uh, felt that uh, any other uh, gathered uh, overwhelming support. 
I also like, liked very much uh, suggestion of uh, 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 Juan Alfonso about uh, about uh, uh, the uh, 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 shaping the evolution of internet. But I, I see that that maybe uh, could be introduced as a, a motto for IGF in general. Uh, I don't know whether that now it's time to uh, to add uh, that type of thing, but uh, please think think in those terms. Put putting a motto uh, for IGF uh, shape, shaping uh, uh, shaping the evolution of the internet. Um, so th this is this is uh, sort of my uh, conclusion uh, from our yesterday's discussion and uh, evening's ex exchange, as well as uh, you uh, saw, I uh, did my part of the homework. I proposed uh, uh, the draft uh, schedule for preparations, and um, so that uh, schedule of preparations stems from experience. Uh, as well as uh, sort of uh, uh, engineering of pre preparatory process, taking into account all other uh, factors that may influence the, the process. So, um, uh, for I, I did a little write-up, and as you see, I'm not very very good in uh, long writing, uh, explaining uh, what what purpose or what aim of uh, each of mag meetings uh, have have been so far, and. Uh, uh, suggesting that uh, we should we should go for uh, this time for uh, three meetings because of the uh, bigger distance between IGF Istanbul and IGF uh, Brazil. Uh, it is more than uh, 14 or it's 14 months, grosso modo, and uh, so not lose uh, kind of dynamic in the preparatory process. Uh, I think we, we need to go for three meetings this time. Uh, the first meeting, uh, I think the uh, tasks are very clear. Uh, for the next meeting in May, uh, we would need to do uh, a selection of uh, workshops uh, based on uh, <coughs> results of uh, call for proposals and pre-selection, which will be done by secretariat based, again, on methodology <coughs> and criteria. Uh, and uh, af after the May meeting, we would have more or less uh, um, sort of uh, architecture of the, of the event. Uh, and then there would be fine-tuning and uh, negotiations with the uh, promoters of workshops uh, in order to fix uh, completely uh, the um, uh, the schedule, and then uh, I think it would be useful to have uh, another meeting in September, uh, which would be uh, devoted more uh, to uh, analysis uh, of state of play with the intersessional activities and the results, and maybe shaping those uh, intersessional activities that still need to be. Uh, the, the modalities of which still need to be defined. And um, uh, that meeting, in my view, would be very useful to organize in New York uh, on UN grounds. The reason for that is uh, that potentially we could also have interaction with the negotiation uh, group of uh, WS, uh, WSIS plus 10 review. So that's the rationale behind proposing it, uh, um, organizing in New York. Uh, of course, this is our wish, because group has not been constituted. Uh, we do not know whether a group will be willing to interact with uh, other stakeholders, as suggested by the uh, uh, UNGA resolution, or uh, what would be modalities of that interaction, what would be the calendar of that interaction. But I think if we uh, practically reach out uh, President of General Assembly, who is in charge of nomination of um, uh, two co-facilitators, as well as 
in charge of organizing interaction with other stakeholders, I think we could uh, shape that uh, uh, timetable uh, and modalities um, ourselves. So therefore, uh, proposal is to have to have the meeting in New York, which provide opportunity uh, to interact, as well as inviting those negotiators to Brazil in November, and organizing not in the meeting of IGF itself, but uh, during the meeting uh, of IGF, on the margins of, of uh, the meeting of IGF, uh, the consultations. Uh, on the, the outcome document of the December uh, This is Plus 10 review. So that, that is my proposal, uh, which I would uh, uh, like you to uh, consider. Uh, that will also focus our uh, conversation further. Uh, if, um, if you uh, are in agreement, please uh, let me know. If you are in uh, violent disagreement, please let me know either, because uh, uh, it would be very interesting to hear concerns. And uh, I see uh, Izumi Aizu is first who is seeking the floor. Af after that, uh, Juan uh, Alfonso and Marilyn and Avri, and many others. <laughs> uh, please, Izumi. Thank you and good morning uh, all. Um, as to your proposal, the main thing, I have some uh, question about the timing. As you proposed in the timetable, that and it, it will be ideal to come to the conclusion of theme and sub-theme at this morning uh, meeting on the one hand. On the other, we are starting very early, unlike the previous preparation. Well, now we are still December. And that relates to the other question that um, there's some uh, proposal floating that we may have a meeting back to back with OECD in March in Paris, which is not written in your um, proposed timetable. And do we really have to decide the theme now, or as we tried in the last years, for example, to put online with the communities um, some kind of feedback, and then the chair could and uh, you could decide. Uh, th th that makes things much easier and widely accepted. I also have very strong problem with the word trustworthy. We, uh, for some of you may know that it's been used by one commercial vendor for com uh, trustworthy computing for many years. There's another initiative called Trustworthy Internet Movement by a particular um, set of organizations of people. And that there's trustworthy.net as a website. I don't mean if, if it's generally acceptable, fine. But again, I'd like to hear the community's voices before we uh, make the decision and then get some criticism. Thank you, Chair. So thank you very much. Um, answering immediately uh, about March meeting. So then, then it seems to me we would, we would go for four meetings, and there are uh, considerable funding implications. Uh, and that is not OECD meeting, uh, but that is UNESCO meeting. And uh, uh, more precisely, that meeting is er in early March. It is on the th uh, 3rd and 4th of uh, uh, March in Paris. Um, yeah, Juan Alfonso, please. Thank you, Chairman. I, I am in principle agree with all this process, but I want to speak a little bit about the intercessional and to view all this toward the UAPESOA, IGF, as a coherent process. Uh, as I said before, and many also echo that, uh, la le next year is a very important year, and the IGF should have really impact, maybe in terms of document. It doesn't need to be consensus document, you know, as it's, as it's written, could be with you, but it has to be a real outcomes. So I believe that the best way is to have the intercessional uh, themes to be coherent with the theme of the, of, of the IGF. In this way, the intercessional could be sort of preparation of input material in order to advance the work and arrive to Joao Pessoa with a lot of ground covered already, even for the workshops to, to fine tune in the end. And not only that, I will even advise that the 
this MAG could uh, recommend the regional IGF or even national IGF as a recommendation, of course, because they can do uh, wh wh what they decide, but to recommend to focus on the same theme of, of, of the theme that we adopt for, for Joao Pessoa. And in that case, also, it did contribute in, is a, as a flow, and then it will have a great strength of this output document or output uh, whatever it comes out that we want to, to provide to the General Assembly for the uh, Sustainable Development Goal process and also for the WISES plus 10 over, uh, over a re review. In this sense, uh, I understand that, in, that the IGF has been characterized by diversity of themes. And maybe this year we should try to make an exception and concentrate only on two or three themes that are really the concern of the global community, not only users but also the rest of the stakeholders. I think this is not a, a step against diversity. Maybe it's a tactical uh, step for this year in which uh, the sustainability of the IGF itself is at stake. And, also, and to finish, uh, I would like to reiterate that we need to differentiate ourselves from ICT for development events again, because also that's, um, that, that will signal the uniqueness of, of this process and it also help our survival. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Juan Alfonso. Uh, Marilyn? Thank you, Chair. Um, my first comment is going to be uh, in support of the uh, idea that 2015 is indeed a very special year. And for that reason, I wish to recall that actually traditionally we usually met three times a year. Um, and sometimes uh, even for more than um, uh, three days in trying to do our work. Uh, we're at a very, uh, um, a moment of opportunity for the IGF and a moment of opportunity for WISA's follow-up. And we need to also keep in mind sometimes it's, it's easy to think only within the IGF that this is, we are MAG members focused on the IGF, but I think we need to remember that the IGF was created as part of a larger uh, um, document, the Tunis Agenda, which called for the IGF, but also is based on the call for uh, the, the entire work of the summit was focused on creating an information society. And 2015 in New York, the IGF will be evaluated along with uh, the WISIS uh, outcomes themselves. So in relation to the draft time schedule, I would propose, um, uh, I do think we need to meet three times during 2015. I understand there are financial implications, and as I am not one of the MAG members who receives funding, I take that into account. But I think that it would be very helpful to, uh, for us to meet uh, um, in conjunction with the meeting in UNESCO. The content of the UNESCO report is directly relevant to the work of the IGF, and UNESCO, of course, is one of the um, IGOs that participates actively in the, um, in the IGF and also will be contributing heavily to the evaluation of the WISIS outcomes. A meeting in, late, in May um, uh, at a time in Geneva when we can get hotel rooms and facilities around the other busy schedule or early June is going to be needed, I think. As for meeting in September in New York, I offer the following thought. While that might be a really excellent idea, I think I would ask that the Secretariat explore the feasibility of uh, sufficient rooms within the United Nations facility versus perhaps needing to meet in a different location and then going into the UN grounds for a shorter meeting which might be built around a consultation with the co-facilitators. I'm just experienced in having um, seen in the past the difficulty of getting uh, meetings for two days, meeting space for two days within the, um, within the UN uh, facilities, particularly in September when the uh, summit uh, 
around uh, the MDGs and sustainable development will take place. I like the idea that we will uh, take public consultation on our ideas about the themes and other um, uh, formats. And I think we saw, we learned last um, time that perhaps we le leapt ahead a little bit too quickly without taking that consultation more broadly from the community. Putting out a call for consultation now would allow us to come back together in uh, early March and then to start really finalizing theme, workshops, format, et cetera. Thank you. So to my count, you, you're talking of about four meetings instead of three. Uh, may I please, Chair, respond? Uh, you're counting this meeting, and I'm counting three meetings in 2015. So, uh, yes. <laughs> I, I always was told that, that uh, accounting is not a science. It's always an art. Uh, Avri, please. Thank you, and good morning. Um, I want to, first of all, say a couple things. In terms of the theme, uh, the overarching theme, as you uh, suggested, I've always had difficulty understanding the Internet as not being trustworthy, while some of the users perhaps weren't. So I, I, I hope that we can differentiate those things. But that's not what I put my flag up to speak about. I think it's going on one of the same themes that, that, that Marilyn spoke of and that we spoke of around the table this morning with our sort of uh, civil society uh, breakfast meeting. And that's that while we're going to suggest many themes today, that we not be the ones to decide on them until such time as, as we've had a chance to get a consultation. Now, what we've been recommending is that we do more than just our old-fashioned please send in an email or, or a text, but actually use some of the crowdsourcing tools to basically get a wider polling of the themes that the IGF community people find interesting. And not only what they find interesting, but what they might be able to work on and interested in working on leading up to the yearly meeting. And finally, to get them to add any themes that, that we forgot to the list. Something that is less than, than essay writing and more something that many of, of, of the IGF community could take part in. You know, the suggestion we were making was that this be done by, by you know, th the end of the year. It's something that certainly could be done in three, four weeks, so it wouldn't slow us down. We could certainly continue our discussions in the meantime, but really requesting that we add themes to the list today of things to be discussed, but that we do not eliminate themes, that we basically leave that as a next exercise uh, for ourselves after the community has had a chance to, to add its voice. Thank you. So now I'll take the remote participant, sorry, online participant, <laughs> Subi. Thank you, Yanis, for making that distinction, and good morning, everybody. Um, I, I do support the working title, Building Trustworthy Internet for Sustainable Development. And there are many reasons for that, because uh, while we're discussing uh, these issues, and I know that uh, there are corporations who have this as part of their motto, as part of their tagline, but for a lot of us in developing countries, we like the internet to remain free and open, and this is a huge part of the conversation, erosion of digital trust, data localization, and data sovereignty. Um, so there, there are many reasons, and I could go on, but I will stop at that as far as the working title is concerned, which could be a possible main theme this year. Um, the motto I particularly like shaping as the evolution of the internet 
because as the IGF brand stands, um, this is something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, it is an excellent proposal to hold the MAG meeting in March in conjunction with UNESCO. Marilyn's already talked about some of the reasons. This is an important study which covers four key areas and all of us are engaging with UNESCO at different forums at different levels. I support that proposal. Um, for workshop and evaluation rating, which is the first item on the agenda, I will come back to that when the floor is open. But I did have a comment about teams for regional and national IGFs. There was a proposal from the floor to look at working in conjunction with what we're discussing at the main IGF. I think it's a two-way process where uh, there are things that feed in from regional and national initiatives in the main IGF. They're not just people who are taking concepts from the main IGF and implementing things around that. So I think the IGF gets enriched each year in paragraph 72 of the Tunis Agenda reflection on capacity building and documenting where we moved along is an important priority. Um, just my last point on intersessional work in the agenda, I see that as being finalized today in terms of working groups. That is something, as I pointed out even yesterday, is a bit of a problem for people who are online and participating or some of us who can't make it. So um, we've been nimble-footed and we've been able to respond to new evolving topics throughout the year and November seems far away. Um, I request the Secretariat and the MAG to be a little flexible as far as constitution of working groups is concerned for intersessional work. And uh, we do not finalize, but we put some suggestions on the table so that there is scope for engaging a wider community there. Uh, but a framework and a parameter, some guidelines, um, that is the discussion that I'm looking forward to today. Thank you, Alex. So thank you. Thank you very much, Subi. Uh, Virat, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, quick points. One, um, I think the earlier we decide the theme, the better it is. Um, last year we really rushed and said we don't have much time. Now we s seem to have a couple of months more and we are saying, oh my God, we have lots of time. Um, I think it would be best to approach the issue of themes as early as possible. Now, if we want to go to crowdsourcing, um, that's not a bad idea, but the challenge of open consultation is that certain stakeholder groups can send in four, five, hundred responses and certain others will send in maybe 10 or 15 at best. Um, that's just the nature of how people respond to online consultation and stakeholders do. Um, and in the end it becomes a numbers game uh, as you yourself sort of accumulated views this morning based on email uh, responses and that's where it boils down to. So we have to be careful uh, in not letting this down to be a numbers game alone. Uh, and therefore, if we have to go for public consultation, we should ensure that we as the MAG at least agree to a set of parameters or principles that are indicated along with the consultation that must be uh, adhered to when responding to public consultation. Otherwise, we could be either in the same spot where we have 40 new responses or uh, a lot of responses coming from one stakeholder and the others kind of struggling to match the numbers. Um, so I would strongly recommend that we look at principles and parameters on how to decide uh, and, and convey that as a part of the public consultation so that um, there is an objective way to then select what comes through the consultation process. And it should not just be a sort of voting or a number game. Uh, second, I agree with the issue of motto. I think that's very well presented. We should certainly consider that. We haven't done it so far. Uh, this one fits, fits really well. Um, I also have a challenge with the word trust and trustworthy. I think we do a great disservice when we try and add those kind of words as prefaces to Internet. I don't think the Internet has to be trustworthy. I think people who are using it and stakeholders have to be trustworthy. So we should be careful not to add adjectives to Internet because the Internet really hasn't done anything uh, wrong to anybody. Uh, we t and we tend to kind of, uh, you know, focus on the internet, and, it, and it's like, it's we should be very careful how that adjective will be perceived if you put it just before internet, 
So I would go back to the working title, um, uh, which was uh, suggested by our, uh, British colleagues of uh, sustainable development. Um, on the issue of meetings, I would Um, I would uh, go along with uh, the comments made by um, uh, Madeline uh, regarding uh, three meetings in 2015. Um, if we were to get a theme out by the next 15, 20 days or whatever the process is, and I'm not sure how long this consultation could take place, but if we had to go that route, and we should try and get some preliminary information in by March. We should also use the March meeting, apart from the UNESCO discussions, to get into the meat of the intersessional work that would have begun. It would also have been around the time when the calls uh, for the proposals would have gone out. So there is a lot of actual uh, substantive work that MAG needs to do, which is put out the calls for workshops, convey the criteria for workshops, convey the sub-themes on based on which this will come through, and also uh, have some substantive discussions around intersessional work because all we have left today is about five hours. I'm not sure how much detail we can get into. And of course, your suggestions for May or June and then September are very welcome. I think we should think through very carefully about September, um, and we would be guided by you, Mr. Chairman, and we are in your hands because we don't quite understand the UN processes and how we can get into that and how we can influence that. And, you know, so it will have to be probably a four-day MAG meeting with one day devoted to an outreach program. So we'll have to design that carefully. And I sort of, you know, but, but we agree with the idea and the principles of, for what is being suggested. Thank you. So thank you very much. Just to inform this discussion, uh, in, in the call that Secretariat uh, put uh, in preparation for this meeting, uh, there was a request uh, not only to submit uh, evaluation uh, of uh, Istanbul meeting and ideas for Brazil, but equally uh, proposals for themes, sub-themes, and intersessional uh, work. And uh, eight, 18 proposals in total have been submitted uh, in response to that call. And um, uh, the um, uh, proposal, uh, w one of the proposals uh, on the theme was Internet Governance for Sustainable Development and Promotion of Human Rights. Another input suggested uh, that theme should be related to topics like surveillance, cybersecurity, online privacy uh, as a primary or overarching theme for 2015 meeting. So you see that, that uh, we have had already some consultations and uh, uh, not, not too many people responded or organizations, but no, nevertheless, we, we went through the process and we created opportunity. Uh, I, as much as I like crowd, crowdfunding, I know we will have a Christmas tree, and then we will be facing a need to trim that tr Christmas tree. Uh, of course, I'm ready, ready to, to uh, go through this uh, trimming process. It's always uh, engaging and, and intellectually challenging, and... Um, so happy to do if, if the MAG uh, considers that is the right way uh, of doing things. But let me now take uh, next speaker, and that is Fiona. Yes, thank you very much, Janice, and thanks for the um, proposal on the schedule. And I think I'll restrict my remarks to that for the time being. Um, just to echo those that have suggested online consultations, I think that's a great opportunity and something that we could do from now until whatever the schedule is we agree so that's always a good exercise to get feedback on themes and things like that um, I, I would have some strong reservations about basically uh, doubling the number of meetings we use to prepare for the IGF which is in effect what we would be doing if we had four meetings um, the WIS has called for the MAG to be lightweight and nimble and it seems to be doubling the meetings seems to go against that concept and making things more bureaucratic um, I would suggest that we be thoughtful when we have face-to-face -face meetings those meetings need to be deliberate and purposeful and things we can't do online. Um, we have in the last couple of years adopted this, um, I think, schedule of every, a call every two weeks, and those have been very effective in getting things done, and I think we should sort of default to that. Um, I, I do think it's just challenging to suggest we keep adding more meetings without clear purpose for those meetings. I think the UNESCO activity in March is a very interesting one, and for those MAG members that are interested in doing that, I would encourage them to do so, but I'm not sure what the UNESCO activity in and of itself has to do with the MAG. Um, and organizing the IGF for November. Um, I'd also like to point out just in the scheduling concept, 
we need to actually get the proposal out for workshop requests and we need to give stakeholders two, two months or so to respond to that request, which means if we don't do that until March, we will not have sufficient time to actually get proposals in and evaluate them if we're going to meet in May. So I think the schedule you've outlined is a good one to start with and I think it could be fleshed out with more specifics of these, you know, every two week calls and what we hope to accomplish to make sure we do them, but would really have strong reservations about doubling the number of meetings and um, how, how often we get together face to face to prepare for something. So thank you, uh, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Um, I also agree that uh, coming to a conclusion on a theme earlier rather than later would help us, especially um, as I'm listening to Fiona's comments with respect to the work that we need to do on the workshop proposals and Bharat's comments on the work that we still need to do on the intercessional piece. We do have a lot of other things that we'll need to decide. I also think coming to a conclusion on a theme a bit earlier gives the community time to get excited about it. It's almost a marketing piece for the IGF and it gives us more time uh, to, to build around that. I do like uh, the notion of some type of motto in the future by uh, Juan Carlos, I think it was. I think that's, uh, that's an interesting concept and I would be interested to hear more about that. Um, also the theme of sustainable development that was raised by our UK colleagues, I think it's a great one. And Anna's uh, contribution yesterday with respect to the inclusion and focus on people I think is really important. And I think one of the other uh, alternatives was sustainable and human development. I'm very supportive of that as well as a concept and I think everything that we are doing, we are benefiting people or we're, we're trying to benefit people so we should try to keep that close. With respect to the best practice forums, um, to the extent that we are looking to add a new one, I would ask the MAG to consider possibly uh, examining online education. I think online education is an area that's seen a lot of growth over the past several years um, and it has, there is a lot of research out there on it now. Um, with respect to MOOCs, MOOCs, excuse me, massive open online courses. Many of the major universities now offer online programs and these programs are accessible to individuals throughout the globe and so it would be interesting to see the progress that's been made, how it's been impacting people, et cetera. And so I think that's one area that might lend itself towards best practice work. Thank you. So thank, thank you. I have uh, online participant Izumi Okutani. Izumi. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Izumi, in particular, would like to support Avery and Marilyn's suggestions about consulting the community through some wider uh, consultation. Um, we have other observers online who are not MAG members who have also shown their support for, th for this and I personally then as I, you'll see that I do have both cards up, um, would also like to show my support for that. If I may continue as myself now, um, so speaking for myself, I, I do agree with the need to or, or with the proposals by Avery and Marilyn and while I understand the timing problems and the addition of, of meetings, I also strongly feel that we need to a approach the strategy of panels and the, the attention we need to give to remote moderation, I'm sorry, online moderation, panel moderation, and panel strategy for proper interaction with online participation so that we need a little bit of time there anyway because when the call for proposals goes out, I think that strategy and information should go out. So I don't think that we're losing anything by taking a little bit of time to attend both uh, situations, both the cons consulting the wider community on the proposals and preparing better guidelines for workshop criteria. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Today is the uh, UN day of persons with disabilities, so uh, I think if we wanted to just mention a little support for uh, the Dynamic Coalition for Persons with Disabilities and keep that in, in the back of our minds at least, um, that is a, a priority. And I thank the Chair for the mention of gender as a possible uh, best practice. Thank you. 
So thank you. Uh, I have Mark, Sita, Constance, uh, Leah, uh, Dominique uh, have asked for the floor. Uh, that that is uh, uh, Jivan. And then I will ask uh, our Brazilian hosts maybe to uh, say what they think, how how they feel, uh, and then we would move on to the other. Uh, other topics. I see Kosi also is asking for the floor. Uh, please, Mark. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, uh, colleagues and uh, observers. Um, thank you very much, Chair, for your um, <coughs> precision uh, in making proposals um, on, with regard to themes and uh, the timetable for preparation for uh, the IGF next year. That's extremely helpful. Really appreciate that. On themes, um, on the overarching theme, uh, support that uh, proposal uh, provisionally. Perhaps we can allow um, 15 to 20 days, as Virat was uh, suggesting, for uh, finalization of that. Uh, and likewise, uh, with regard to the themes, I think we should uh, act quickly uh, in order to go public early in the new year on themes, uh, sub-themes, as well as the overarching theme. I think it's um, appropriate really that the MAG, uh, with its diverse and global membership, uh, to be tasked with finalizing this rather than going to a cloud sourcing uh, route. Uh, I, I appreciate Avery's point, obviously, that uh, uh, any opportunity to maximize engagement is good, but I think the MAG is properly empowered to do that uh, task. Uh, the motto, I think, is an um, uh, interesting uh, proposal. We'll, we'll give consideration to that and respond quickly. With regard to the timetables for preparation, uh, we would prefer to keep it to three meetings, in including this one. Uh, the March um, UNESCO event, uh, I see more as an opportunity for uh, the MAG to report progress uh, at that meeting. I, I, I agree with previous speakers that I don't really see the necessity in terms of practical, t practical uh, action for a face-to-face -face meeting that's going to have resource implications and so on. Online uh, action, uh, I think, will, will um, cover what we need to do in the period leading up to, to May. So I would uh, stick to your proposal for for three meetings, uh, next meeting in May. I agree with your September proposal for a meeting in New York. Outreach uh, there is vital, and we should signal that uh, offer um, to, to do that in, in September as early as possible so that uh, the lead negotiators there will, will be aware of it and will anticipate it and factor it into uh, the program for whatever the modalities are for uh, um, preparation for the high-level meeting. Uh, the second committee uh, yesterday in New York, my colleague there, has reported that uh, uh, a major influential member of the committee has uh, resisted mandate renewal at this time on a point of principle. I won't name that administration, but it was a previous IGF host, so that narrows it down, if you like, to help you identify who it, who it is. Um, so uh, it looks unlikely that mandate renewal will happen uh, in this uh, year's resolution, so it makes it all the more imperative that uh, we report, go public on uh, improvements, innovations, the preparatory process for Brazil and so on with the themes readily identified and the processes of multi-stakeholder engagement uh, fully enacted uh, and so on. So uh, that's my point on the, um, my main point on the timetable. With regard to intercessional work, I. Uh, I have to say I'm a little bit surprised that we're solely focusing on the best practice um, uh, mechanism, if you like, uh, if, that's not, if, if that's the right word, I'm not sure it is, but uh, I certainly support, uh, of course, the best practice approaches, but I wonder if we're losing sight of other valuable intercessional work. Uh, on net neutrality and uh, supporting uh, maybe two, one or two dynamic um, uh, 
coalitions on rights and child protection and bring that into the package of uh, intercessional activity so that uh, we don't sort of uh, narrow it too, too definitely at this stage. So I, I just sort of wanted to come back to that, to the importance of um, uh, taking forward what was agreed in Istanbul on, on net neutrality and, uh, and what, what, is, uh, what you reported, Chair, in your summary uh, that is important with regard to the dynamic uh, coalitions. Uh, finally, we should um, uh, inform uh, as early as possible the national and regional IGFs what, what, we're, what we're planning. Uh, and one other point with regard to their con potential contribution is that, uh, with a go going back to best practices, uh, we should uh, communicate to them uh, a kind of request that they consider nominating uh, uh, experts from their, uh, uh, within their national and regional communities to contribute to these best practice forms. That, I think, is a valuable sort of line of a, a global uh, communication for us to, to develop in terms of um, ensuring that uh, the uh, active participants are truly global and represent uh, stakeholder communities um, uh, from all uh, regions, developing countries, least developed uh, and uh, uh, islands uh, uh, and so on. So thank you. Uh, I hope those comments are helpful. Thank you. So thank, thank you. Um, uh, certainly they are. The, the question about intercessional activities is uh, we have, there are two strategies. One, one we're proposing a menu of uh, items uh, and uh, sort of uh, spreading thin uh, across the board or we're concentrating on one uh, which uh, fits in the uh, 2015 year philosophy, sustainable development and, and economic development and, and uh, access and so on. So again, these are two different approaches and I, I appreciate your, your thoughts on that. Uh, Sita, please. Thank you. Uh, I have two issues I want to table. The first one is the sub theme. Um, I would like to suggest the continuation for discussion on the internet as an engine for growth and development sub theme, just like we had in Istanbul but more into the business term, or using what Juan said regarding the Internet for Economic Development, especially on how it should be reflected in the business ecosystem between the global and national business entities. Uh, and the second is that the timetable for intercessional work, um, what we discussed on the table with several civil society organization representative, intercessional work in which I'm still digesting what the term is, we suggested that this work should be decided in the early 2015, considering that there will be a series of regional, such as the Asia Pacific or national IGF throughout the years. I would think that starting as early as possible would be good to exercise the intercessional work. But I don't know, perhaps you have another explanation on that, why you put it in September, Chair. Thank you. Uh, no, I mean, I mean intercessional work would start immediately as soon as we're ready. Uh, if we're ready after this meeting tomorrow, we will, we will launch it then. Uh, in September, we would review the progress and uh, contribute maybe to finalization, if possible. So that, that is the idea. And cer certainly, the, uh, every two week uh, phone calls of, of the MAG is, uh, so we, I, I intend to continue with that practice because that was very useful. Uh, to progress activities and, and then make decisions. Uh, Constance, please. Isaac. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. Um, on the overarching theme, I think I would echo some of the concerns about the word trustworthy. Uh, an alternative might be a trusted internet. If we're uh, sticking to the idea of sustainable development, then it would be a trusted internet for sustainable development. Um, on the schedule, I would echo um, the points made by Fiona. I think it's, uh, it's quite important. Um, and then uh, in terms of intercessional work, um, the, the idea put forward by ICC bases I think is, a, is an interesting proposal. Um, I, I like very much this idea of having policy menus uh, building up to 2015. At the same time, I think we need to, to consolidate what we have already 
so my suggestion uh, would be that uh, perhaps we, we consider that the theme for intercessional work proposed by uh, ICC be the same theme as the over uh, arcing theme of, of the IHGF, just to make sure we, we stay consistent uh, through our intercessional work and as we work towards outcomes for the, the final um, uh, IGF event in, um, in, in Brazil. Uh, in the same spirit, it seems to me that then the policy menus should probably be the same in terms of theme than the sub-themes we have for um, the, the IGF. And um, the best practices would be foundational pieces, I think, of those policy menus. Um, uh, and then in terms of how do we make this happen, um, if, if there's agreement um, and if we can find volunteers uh, among the MAG group, but perhaps also beyond the MAG group, um, I think it would be good to kickstart work uh, through some sort of working group uh, that would be working closely with, uh, with the Secretariat. And uh, I've mentioned the need to have the Secretariat uh, lead the process for neutrality reasons as we, as we develop outcomes. And I still think it's, uh, it's very important. Um, so if we could have a working group, I think we, we would need to have someone from ICC, civil society, technical community, all the all the sensitivities uh, in that working group um, to to kickstart the intercessional work um, after after this meeting, and then with regards to the best practices, I hear your concern about uh, limited resources. If um, if the idea is to work in the framework of uh, five themes maximum, um, it seems to me that some of the current themes maybe need two or three extra months of work, but not 12 months. So maybe we could consider uh, finalizing some of the themes between now and the next MAG meeting, and then instead of adding simply one theme, we could add one, two, three, depending on where we are with, uh, with the old themes. Um, in this regard, in terms of, of new themes, I think IXPs is, is a good one. Uh, Gender and ICT, I'm not an expert, but if, if there's support, um, why not? And then I think someone also uh, suggested um, best practices for IPv6 implementation, which might be uh, another one to consider. Thank you very much. So thank you, Constance. Um, I'm now calling on uh, Leah. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to echo a number of points that were made by colleagues. Um, first, on the timetable, um, I actually support the idea of having four meetings in total. Um, I do think that a lot of work has to be done in between, but having face-to-face -face meetings really adds value. Um, but I do appreciate Fiona's point that we need to make sure that, they ma that it makes sense and that uh, you know, we can justify to our uh, communities, you know, and the, the expenses. Um, I really like the idea of the of the New York meeting that you mentioned, as a, and having a part of that meeting to be an outreach uh, activity to feed into the conversation about the WSIS plus ten review and. As Mark said, I think, and I agree with that, that there needs to, this needs to be clearly communicated in advance in order to make sure that, uh, that it has maximum impact. Um, one thing that you mentioned, Chairman, uh, in your presentation was a possibility of having a um, consultation on the WSIS Plus 10 review during the IGF meeting, but on the margins. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to perhaps caution against that and encourage us to have an open mind of uh, still adding that onto the main program if that's something that the community wants. I'm afraid that if it will be a big issue next year and uh, as we'll be coming close to the December meeting in New York, it, there could be a clash between then the, the main program and, the, and this discussion and I would want to see that happen, that people who are interested in that discussion can't attend if it's on the margins or clashing with the main program of the IGF. Um, I'd like to strongly support the suggestion made by Avri and supported by others in the room on public consultation on the themes. Uh, perhaps to, as it seems that there's a lot of 
support for this. Um, perhaps so a way forward would be to take the, the themes that were suggested by various members overnight and yesterday and put that together with the suggestions that were made uh, in the submissions prior to the meeting, as you suggested, and put that out to the community to um, perhaps give them a draft of uh, proposals that could be uh, considered, um, but also leave room for additional proposals to make sure that uh, the views of the community are reflected. Um, on the intercessional work, uh, I think Mark made that point that we need, I, I don't know how others see it, but I thought that intercessional work is something much broader than the best practice forums. It's actually everything that happens between sessions. That's why it's called intercessional work. So it's basically anything that happens between annual meetings. And uh, I think Constance made that point. I mean, it, it contains not just best practice forums, but dynamic coalitions, as well as any preparations towards workshops that I think we should also encourage uh, to make sure that there's a dynamic discussion happening a whole year round. Uh, I think Sita mentioned that having that as an August activities was confusing for me when I saw that in the schedule, but uh, you just to clarify that that's not what you meant, so appreciate that. Um, I don't know whether it would be worth perhaps uh, as we seek views from the community on the themes to also seek um, input on intercessional work um, and uh, support Constance's view that there should be consistency between intercessional work and the program of the conference to make sure we maximize, maximize input. Um, and as a last point, uh, this is not something that um, perhaps we have to discuss at this meeting, but just want to make sure it doesn't fall off the radar it was something that was picked up overnight. I think Patrick wrote an email about the, a document that was uh, circulated yesterday, the MAG terms of reference. Uh, it, there just seem to be a number of questions there. Perhaps we can, and I hope we can have a discussion about that online after the meeting. Um, just want to make sure that doesn't drop off the radar. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, maybe maybe uh, let me talk a little bit from systemic point of view. Uh, of course, uh, many things have happened uh, since uh, 2006 when we met for the first time in IGF. And uh, there has been a significant evolution in uh, the whole ecosystem. Uh, things have changed. Uh, but in essence, uh, uh, the MAG is uh, charged to prepare uh, one event, a global IGF. And uh, we do not have any say over neither regional or national IGFs. We can only invite them to uh, cooperate with us and to uh, take up our uh, suggestions, which would then feed in the preparation and substantive work of the uh, IGF meeting uh, in Brazil. So that, that is how I see it. Uh, and um, so there, therefore, um, I would be very cautious in uh, imposing or uh, at even attempting to impose something on regional IGFs uh, in, in a direct sense. Uh, inviting them on voluntary basis and consider and report back and, and then provide input, that is the, the uh, uh, phraseology we, we would need to, uh, to use. Our task is to organize main meeting in the best possible way based on input from, from others. Uh, we have still n many other issues to discuss, and uh, of course, the, uh, the, uh, this, this is extremely important. I, I think we, we're uh, moving towards kind of general understanding that maybe additional consultations with the community would be needed by Christmas, and then we would attempt to uh, finalize the uh, theme by, uh, by mid-January uh, that we could issue the call uh, for proposals uh, around uh, end January, early February. Uh, so this is this is uh, how I feel we we can we can proceed. But nevertheless, I have a number of other speakers, uh, and I will call on um, uh, Dominique. Thank you, Chair. As this is my first intervention as a new MAG member, I just want to thank everybody for their intervention so far. I've learned, um, I've learned a lot already over the last two days. Just a couple of points. I just want to support the um, idea of 
uh, deciding on a theme earlier rather than later. Um, this not only provides, uh, as Mark said, as our colleague from the UK said, um, sort of ener energy and focus uh, going forward, but also a structure for, from which we can do our work and from which everyone else can start thinking about and planning workshop proposals. Um, it's important to point out that the th providing a theme, a general theme for the IGF is probably, um, it does not limit in fact, any other sub-themes or workshops or anything like that, but just provides a general goal and vision. Um, and to that end, I think uh, it is in part our responsibility as a MAG to uh, decide on that. And um, I support the chair as well, again, as various others um, in that direction. Just uh, a couple of other things in terms of the meetings. Um, three meetings seems appropriate as long as we can continue to have the calls and um, the discussions online, which again I think need to be done in a, in a sort of um, a effective and structured way and a theme again would provide that. And, uh, and finally, I support obviously the, the proposal um, that the ICC put forward uh, on intersessional work and, and as well as Constance Constance's intervention on um, drawing uh, from that uh, and towards a, a general theme as well. So thank you. So thank you, Jivan. Yeah, I wanted to um, follow up and underline the few who have um, said that um, trust, tr trustworthy is not something that we should put uh, as an adjective for the internet, and perhaps Constance's uh, suggestion of going into trusted could do the job, but um, that is something that I don't think would do uh, uh, describe the process well. Um, I think that crowdsourcing is a good way, and I think that uh, we should use it more. Perhaps uh, not necessarily directly on the main theme, but. Uh, we should work toward collecting more uh, from the community, more ideas, more uh, uh, process, more uh, of their thoughts and what is important to them. And the regional IGFs, I think, that are a good resource for that as well. <clears throat> we don't necessarily have to ob oblige and create a direct uh, link that stays from now on, but to use them from now on <coughs> is something that we should uh, use uh, uh, henceforth. Um, in terms of the crowdsourcing, I think that the, the idea of panel moderation is a good one. Uh, I think that there's a lot of people who here who could uh, contribute to that and uh, so that we shape up and especially because we do have these 14 months, we should use them to uh, really in the beginning open the net uh, wide and then slowly um, have people from here perhaps as panel moderators that uh, direct uh, conversations in a, in a given area. Um, I, and to get back to a conversation that we've had on outcomes, I think that we keep on thinking of outcomes as ready polished products and then we don't necessarily have to think of them in that way. I think that there are those things that come out as ready polished products, perhaps the channel, the, the chair summary, etc. But the IGF can also be a place where ideas, information and data come out and that somebody else makes sense out of that afterwards. It doesn't have to be made sense right away or what exactly it means. So increasing the numbers isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, increasing the number of, 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 of data, increasing the number of ideas, of information that uh, goes through the IGF in some form and thus through the MAG in some form is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, three meetings is more than enough, I think, uh, including this one, uh, and I think that the proposals of uh, May and September are uh, well thought out, and uh, the motto, the idea for a motto is also a good one, and I like it, uh, the way it's uh, shaped. Cheers. So thank you, Kosi. Parole à vous. Merci beaucoup, Président. Thank you very much, Chairman. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry for going back to elements which have already been dealt with, but actually the subject we're talking about and the proposal being made is very relevant. But the most important thing for me is to see how these proposals fit into what our communities want. And this is what we're here for. And in the private sector, we have the world of research and also we have governments. And at this level, it could be said that we could adopt a minimum consensus on the 
themes of our activities and the global themes because I'm saying that as far as national uh, uh, matters are concerned, I'm thinking about uh, Benin, we want to be sure that the activities we carry out at, le at national level contribute to world level. This, it should not be at the last minute that information is provided on the themes so that everybody gets lost in all the proposals being made. We've already said in the past that the national should be done before the a regional and the world IGF should come after that. If we want to respect that principle and be sure that the information comes from the base to the summit, then we will have gone a long way to reaching a consensus on the themes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kosi, for your contribution. I will take uh, three more interventions uh, in this in this respect uh, from from the uh, from the room, and that is Anna Maria Victoria and uh, uh, Cisco Systems, and 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 we need to move on. <laughs> we we can't stay on this all the time. I think we're reaching reaching the. And then I would like to ask uh, Brazil to react. Uh, there will be other other topics to, to talk about, many other, and we still have uh, at least uh, four and a half hours of working. Um, so, Anna, please. Thank you very much, and and good morning, everybody. Um, I just would like to say uh, a couple of things. I think that the overarching themes should be global, concise, and inclusive, and it should sound st strong and as a continuum uh, of what has been achieved so far, but at the same time, it should sound strong to the citizen. So again, I'm putting a lot of uh, uh, effort here uh, to pay attention to, to, to people, to the citizen, because at the end of the day, what we are doing here is for us, is for the society, is for people. Business is for people. Uh, economy is for people. So uh, I think that the theme, therefore, uh, we should concentrate our uh, energy on the sub-themes that can be a really uh, broad and uh, we can have a very good discussion on, on those ones. But for the main theme, I think that we should move on, and, uh, and I would like to, to appeal to have a global, concise, and um, a global, concise, and inclusive theme that sounds very st strong. So something that any, any, anyone can hear and immediately uh, understands that uh, what we are talking about. Um, and that's it. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, Maria Victoria. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, Chair, I would be brief because many of the issues that I wanted to touch have already been said by previous colleagues. And um, uh, regarding the overarching team, I sent this morning a couple of proposals back to basics, fundamental problems of internet governance and or 10 IGFs, where we are and where we're going. And I'm not uh, completely sure about public consultation, the, the less it, it will be important. And um, it will be important as well as some of the colleagues said that to have a consolidated uh, version of all the proposals and, and to not to waste too much time and to start from that. And I fully agree that it has to be people oriented as well. Regarding the sub teams, uh, I would uh, support those proposals of oriented to human rights and e-government, as Virat said this morning, his proposal. I, I, I like that very much, and as well as emerging issues, just to be sure. And uh, the other point I wanted to touch was on forging synergies. I agree that uh, you said we cannot impose, and we do not impose anything on regional or national uh, processes, but we can uh, 
work together and, and forge these synergies. As per the intersessional work, Chair, I agree that three meetings, it's, it's a good number, including this one, May and September, and the one, we have to be very careful of the one in September because we know that is a huge activity on the, when the General Assembly starts and lots of heads of delegations, and it will be difficult to get the attention of uh, different uh, people, and especially the two facilitators of the WISIS plus 10 process, so we have to take that in mind. And also in the international intersessional process, Chair, I would like to stress the need to, to uh, have in mind the activities for outreaching other, other um, actors, especially government from developing countries. And for that, uh, activities in Geneva and New York are extremely important. Thank you, Chair. So thank you, indeed. Uh, September is busy time, but, but the second part of September in New York is busy time. Uh, the first part is still okay. Um, uh, Cisco Systems. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you for recognizing and allowing observers to comment during this period. It's very appreciated. Uh, two quick points. Uh, I'm listening to a discussion of intersessional work and uh, just it seems there's a difference to me between intersessional work and intersessional activities. Uh, and intersessional work implies a work product. Uh, just so I want to just repeat my plea from Monday that the intersessional work needs to be clearly scoped into what work's expected and how is it input to IGF and what's expected to do with it. Uh, so that's the one, one point. The other one is uh, taking care on focusing on internet governance. Uh, and not slip into technical work. Uh, some of the proposals I've seen are very good, but they could easily slide into discussions of technical aspects and how to implement. And I think that would be, uh, uh, I think we need to focus on the internet governance aspects uh, and not resist the temptation to kind of get involved in, you know, discussing uh, implementation work. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, Lee, 30 seconds, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just putting Lee Hibbard from the Council of Europe, but putting my Euroleague hat on to say that um, I think it's a very good idea to engage the, the regional IGFs uh, where possible. Um, we have a planning meeting for the Euroleague in Sofia in Bulgaria on the 27th of January. I think it'd be very important um, if you can, if the IGF mag can give um, clear indications or requests of what you actually want us to convey to you. That's very, very important. And the second thing is that we, we already do a, a data collection of all proposals. We put them into a very transparent table and, and then we therefore cluster things according to what we received. So that's something we can share immediately. And I think it's very important that all this data collection is done in a transparent fashion so that the MAG can decide very clearly what comes from where and how things are resolved thereafter. Um, and the last thing is just to say that um, I think it's very important if we can try, at least in the planning meeting we have, to, to try to encourage, let's say, to get some budget to send one or two, let's say, ambassadors from the region to, to contribute to the global level in terms of content substance issues. Thank you. So thank you for this intervention and proposal. Uh, before going to Brazil uh, for kind of uh, uh, maybe summing up and reaction, uh, I will invite online participant Subi to uh, say a few words, but please briefly. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I still support the team that has been proposed and I very strongly echo support for Avi's initial proposal for crowdsourcing inputs and going back to the public for consultation, both on the sub-teams uh, with a tight deadline perhaps, as well as proposals for working groups and intersessional work. Um, before we go into the topic of main themes, and I will reserve my comments uh, for that section, I would want to put a proposal on the table for commemorating rating and marking uh, the decade-long journey of the IGF, either through a souvenir and also uh, augmenting the motto that's been suggested, shaping the evolution of the internet by prefacing that with 10 years of shaping the use and the evolution of the internet. Um, if you could consider printing badges or souvenirs and taking that message out, maybe augmenting also the IGF logo with the sub tag, that is an important message that we can take away as we work towards the preparatory process. That'll be all for now. Thank you. So thank you. That is more for, for host country to do the 
the like like uh, l uh, these uh, badges <laughs> for, uh, for participants. Uh, uh, please, Flavio, I understand you will be uh, trying to express uh, opinion and sentiments of the host country. Yeah, thank you, Janice. Uh, so, uh, first regarding the, the main uh, theme of the uh, IGF 2015, uh, if we remember the, the, the final outcome of the Net Mundial uh, event, uh, the statement identified many important issues that deserve attention from the community. Uh, and we fear that the proposed working title uh, is uh, maybe too narrow by concentrating on a, a, a subset of those relevant issues that we should face as a global community. And particularly, it may suggest that the IGF wants to concentrate on issues like security and massive monitoring. And remember, please, that Brazil was strongly involved with promoting a discussion on these issues, uh, even with a uh, speech of the Brazilian president at the United Nations General Assembly last year. Uh, regarding exactly security and massive monitoring. So people could think this theme has been proposed by Brazil and uh, to have a focus on these issues during IGF 2015. So this could uh, give a very misleading message to the community. So we would like this to reinforce our suggestion to build a bridge between the net mundial outcome, which is much broader and inclusive, and IGF. So the roadmap established by the Net Mundial Declaration proposes uh, further discussions on several themes that are extremely relevant for the evolution of the Internet governance ecosystem. And remember, the Declaration firmly proposes the strengthening of the IGF, suggesting that it is the most adequate forum to address in a multi-stakeholder setting all those issues that are not covered uh, adequately by existing entities or processes. And especially in 2015, when the General Assembly will decide on the continuation of IGF, it would be very relevant to show that the community firmly proposes, for instance, by means of the Net Mundial Declaration that has been uh, prepared by the community, that the IGF is the main forum for the discussion of all themes that are uh, relevant for the evolution of the ecosystem. And, and we think that the main theme of the uh, IGF 2015 could clearly show that IGF accepts these roles and is up to the challenge proposed by the community itself. And we think that the proposed theme also creates the required bridge between the evolution of the uh, Internet governance ecosystem and the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So IGF 2015 could explicitly discuss through its workshops, main sessions, and so on, how advancing the ecosystem and following on the path of the Net Mundial recommendations. We can help society and government to, to meet these goals. So this is regarding the, the, the main theme. Regarding the sub-themes, uh, we would like to see a small number of, uh, of sub-themes such that we can organize the three or four main sessions uh, uh, that are focused on them and that bring together the contributions and results from, from the many workshops and, and dynamic coalitions and best practice forums and so on. So we would, like, would not like to see a too, too large number of sub-themes. Finally, regarding the timetable for the preparation process, we would like to have as much opportunities as possible to discuss face-to-face -face in the MAG and to have open consultation with the community before we take our final decisions regarding the program. So uh, we know that maybe due to budgetary problems, it's uh, difficult to, to have uh, the meeting in March, but uh, let's uh, have this opportunity still open uh, until uh, we can take a final decision on that. So, thank you. Um, so, I, I, I have nothing to say. <laughs> no, it's very, very difficult. So, one, one thing is clear. We're, we're uh, very far apart uh, on, on the uh, main theme and sub-themes. We need further further consultations, and uh, maybe if I if I would invite um, a group of MAG members who are most interested in this topic and who have spoken uh, the most uh, during the lunchtime, still uh, come together and try trying to uh, work out um, a possible sort of uh, a proposal that we could put uh, on. Uh, sort of uh, for consultations with, with the larger community, uh, maybe that would be uh, very helpful. 
uh, for, for doing that. Yes, Virat, please. Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, place one time consideration for the for the for the MAG to remember. Just as we talk about two hour main sessions and you know all the workshops reporting into that, and then there's a time issue because it's 120 minutes. This is an unusual year. A typical year is seven months of preparation. We have one meeting in February and one in May. If we go with the process of consulting and crowdsourcing for the first time in IGF's history, which is a very good idea on paper, here is the challenge you have. You'll put out the call for consultation in February every year. You will get responses for intersessional work and theme in March. You will finalize that the earliest in April. When you meet in May, you would not have been able to put out the call for workshops, and you would not have begun the work on intersessional work. So the May meeting would actually become meaningless every year, unless MAG is planning to meet every year three times starting December of 2015 and so on. We have a, this 14 month is an unusual exception. We have seven months to plan. So when we talk about crowd, and, and that is the reason why MAGs, many MAGs before us have made this decision and then left it open to the community to contribute workshops based on a range of sub-themes. That's the process of sub-themes. But please think again. You, by May, you would only have finalized the themes, and intersessional work would have got you, at best, three or four months of work, which is the same as best practice last year. So as we, as we put these proposals out, let's keep in mind we will not have 14 months each year. Thank you. Actually, now we have only 11, um, if my math is right. But no, uh, with with the I I'm, I do not want to change the uh, timetable. Um, as n maybe not in not in details, but in principle, uh, I th I think the latest we would need to get out call for uh, proposals is uh, end of January. By end of January, we need to have a theme and sub-themes identified and agreed upon. Uh, today, we're too much far apart, and this is, uh, there is no convergence in this room at the moment. Maybe during the lunchtime, uh, the most interested uh, uh, members could come together and to uh, work out ki kind of a solution or proposal which we then would call a working title. And we would put it uh, for, the, for the consultations uh, with the community uh, to, to seek their feedback. Uh, and then uh, through the online meeting, through the conference call, we would take a decision uh, on the theme and sub-theme uh, sometime in, in uh, mid-January that we can propose, a, uh, can issue a call for proposals at the end of January. So then uh, we would uh, suggest two months uh, for proponents of workshops to uh, give, uh, sort of to formulate their, their um, uh, proposals and submit to the secretariat. And then we would have uh, another two months uh, for MAG members, for secretariat first do a pre-screening and then for MAG members do evaluation. And uh, with that we would come to the May meeting, May or June meeting, uh, where we would do selection process as we did uh, uh, every year. After that, uh, secretariat would contact uh, all proponents doing necessary adjustments, mergers, uh, fine-tuning, and, and uh, this nitty-gritty work to get schedule uh, agreed and published uh, more or less by uh, end of July. So, uh, and then uh, that would be uh, for, for the, for the uh, preparation for the meeting itself. Then, of course, comes uh, intercessional intersessional activities and best practices. Um, we, now we know that uh, seven weeks for best practices is not, is not enough. It would be good to uh, engage 
uh, and start working on best practice compilations as early as possible. So here, I, I, I here we have three themes, maybe uh, uh, which could could be uh, suggested: gender and, and internet and gender, uh, the uh, IXPs and IPv4, IPv6. Uh, at, at least then, and then we need to see uh, what two other themes would be, either a continuation of two out of five uh, that we had now to finalize them completely and present outcomes to the next meeting, or my preference would be uh, to have an, another two additional themes uh, to, to make the library of compilations larger than, than we have. Also with understanding that these are living documents and, and every time we, we have a, something new, interesting that has been proven working, we add to the, uh, to the, to the mix. And um, uh, so, but then comes this intercessional. You, you all know very well that one of the uh, claims of everybody is that uh, IGF needs to produce more tangible outcomes. That should become more relevant. And in the Istanbul meeting, we were talking about uh, engaging on a theme uh, which would make a lot of uh, sort of relevance for member states, particularly for uh, developing countries. And uh, it was suggested in the chair's statement or chair's report that this theme might be uh, of um, sort of non-controversial with, with a developmental angle, and ICC Basis has produced uh, uh, the proposal which suggests that this theme could be a policy menu uh, for next billion online. That that is uh, that certainly has a uh, developmental aspect, that has economical aspect, that has access aspect uh, that is um, geared towards developing countries that contributes to the overall sort of uh, 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 strategic uh, theme of 2015 that is sustainable development and so on. I mean, we can, we can justify that particular um, uh, topic. Of course, we need to construct these uh, intercessional activities, how that will be done. And again, taking into account um, the resource constraints, including human resource constraints, uh, we, we need heavily rely on regional and national IGFs, hoping that they would take up that topic and they would uh, provide input after discussing that topic in, the, in, their, in their events. Again, from the, from the um, uh, previous experience, and please do not take it as any pejorative comment, the previous experience shows that there is a hype of activities of the MAG members during the face-to-face -face meeting, and then gradually it goes down because of the routine and, and, and daily work and, and, and so on. And, and we, we need to be very careful in our planning not to take up more commitments than we can deliver. I think that, that that is the uh, uh, danger for us, danger for our credibility, if we over-promise and under-deliver. I would rather go for solution under-promise and over-deliver uh, in, in, that, in that respect. So therefore, again, we need to be very practical and, and um, evaluate uh, the size of our stomach against the size of our eyes because eyes always are bigger than, than, than stomach. Uh, and we want to eat more than we can, we can really uh, swallow. Um, so th these, are, these are my reflections. And uh, I would like now to see if there is uh, somebody who could volunteer to, uh, during the lunchtime, to anim animate that discussion. Would you like to do that? Yes, thank you, Yanis. I was just going to comment on that. Uh, and uh, I think the timetable you have proposed is uh, excellent and will allow us not to waste the time we have, uh, to make good use of the time we have until November. So by the end of January, we can have uh, the teams and sub-teams to 
kick off the, the process. So uh, since we, uh, at the end of this morning session, we will have only three hours left in the afternoon, what I'd like to suggest, and I haven't even discussed with my delegation, is that if those interested uh, parties could maybe meet outside the room or here by 2 p.m. Uh, uh, of course, we can even meet during the lunch time in the smaller setting, but if those who can make it by 2, we'll be more than happy to, to try to, to have some more, uh, some further discussion on this. Of course, I, think, I don't think this will preempt the consultations that will follow online after the meeting, but maybe it will help us to get out of the meeting with some more uh, clarity and, and some more understanding on the, the various options before us. So we'll be more than happy to, to try to assist in this uh, if we can rely on colleagues who can come by 2 p.m. And of course, then the, uh, as you have said, uh, Yanis, uh, uh, we'll have to, to wait uh, our uh, eating necessities. <laughs> we'll be limiting the time for uh, satisfying the stomach, but I think the discussions will be, uh, will benefit from this. Thank you. So thank you, Mark. But very quickly, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mark, our UK government. Just to, very briefly, just to underline that um, in similar fashion to EURIDIC, the European Dialogue Internet Governance, the European Regional IGF, which Lee reported on in terms of process for picking up the direction from the MAG, the UK IGF committee is meeting next week. There may be other national and regional IGFs which likewise are sort of hanging on for decisions here. So just to underline that and, uh, you know, in terms of ensuring effective reaction, commitment, contribution to the intersessional activity, this work that we are doing has to ensure agility, fleet-footedness and uh, ex ex uh, expediency in, in securing the contributions to make intersessional activity meaningful, substantial and work. So you need to ensure that the window for engagement with the wide diversity of national and regional IGFs and their processes of consultation and, and, and uh, executive management is, is, is there for the MAG to, uh, to secure um, effective um, um, solutions to, to intersessional modalities. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Constance. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I said uh, I, I think that the, um, the policy menus was uh, a, a good idea to kickstart the intersessional work. It's still unclear to me, however, uh, why we need a separate theme for the intersessional work, um, because um, it's experience shows that uh, the difficulty within the IGF context is really to consolidate the work we have. And um, I'm a little concerned that we might um, create another track that would not consolidate with what we're trying to do with regards to the preparation of the event itself. Um, so I don't have a strong opinion about the overarching theme, whether it's the one we discussed or whether it's the one proposed by ICC for the intersessional work, as long, I think, as it's the same theme um, and that we, we build intersessional work towards the event, the IGF event, where we would collectively acknowledge the, the outputs of the work done uh, intercessionally. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Online participant, who is that? Subi has asked for the floor, and there is also a concern about the possible online uh, participation during the lunch meeting. Perhaps we can ask Adrian to arrange WebEx at 2 o'clock here in the room, or we'll, I'll check with you later. No? Okay, these are technical. So at at technical any rate, that is, that is a concern, yeah. and then the card is for Subi. Thank you. Subi, please. 
Yanis, uh, if we could re-emphasize the point that was made earlier in the day to differentiate between intercessional work and intercessional activity. One of the concerns has been the IGF and the perception that we uh, organize an annual meeting. And when we look at your proposal from this morning, there is a very clear plan that has been outlined that communicates to the community and to the MAG members that we will be engaging in work throughout the year towards the preparatory process. Uh, however, um, there are best practice fora and uh, two or three new working groups that we're suggesting. Um, I would like to reiterate that we have more such working groups, but we also continue to disseminate actively the information that the IGF MAG will be doing while we're on the road to Brazil. Um, and I just had another suggestion for an intercessional work team enhancing youth participation at the Global Internet Governance Dialogue. If I could just leave it on the floor for reflection and consideration. Thank you for now. So thank, thank you, Subi. Christina from Egypt. Thank you, Chair. Um, maybe I'm coming in um, um, with the hat of the Arab IGF here, and I um, would like to welcome uh, the proposal of, um, uh, of the policy menu and of engaging with national and regionals intercessionally. Uh, but I think we need to take into account that some of the national and regional IGFs only meet later into the year. And, um, and likewise, uh, we need to encourage them to work intercessionally, probably also um, um, uh, through mailing lists and online. And I, I would suggest uh, to issue like an invitation as early as possible for them uh, with clear uh, ideas of uh, uh, topics that we'd like to see in um, uh, the policy menu or directions. Um, and I also think um, I would like to uh, echo maybe uh, Lee and Mark's comments that uh, enough uh, time and a, and, a, and a larger window should be given uh, to them. Uh, that is, if we uh, want to allow for enough time for them to, you know, uh, channel in uh, uh, their input. Uh, one last question. I think it could be also good to have more info on uh, how is the input coming from the nationals and regionals going to be channeled in. Uh, so how, how, how is that going to happen? Thank you. So thank you. Uh, just clarification. Uh, uh, just clarification for um, this intercessional work uh, or the proposed topic. The idea is to produce a document uh, which would be uh, submitted uh, or presented to the IGF in Brazil uh, where we would seek uh, maybe uh, buy-in by uh, all participants. And that would respond to, uh, to those who request more tangible outputs uh, from, from, the, from the meeting. The same applies for a compilation of best practices that would be also submitted to the uh, uh, IGF, maybe without explicit request for uh, endorsement. But th this is a difference between this one uh, substantive issue that we would try to work through uh, intercessionally and bring some kind of uh, document. And again, I do not know what kind of document. And I don't know how the, we will call the document. That will be the the, the people working on, on, on that um, uh, that would suggest whether that will be a principles or that would be a recommendation or that will be a, a, a takeaways. We don't know yet. Uh, but but that's, that's the difference. We will try to uh, get buy-in by everybody uh, to, that, to that document. And therefore, the team proposed, I think, is very opportune because it is non-controversial, that is development-oriented, that, that speaks about access. And as we know today, the biggest access is in developing world. I mean, there are all these elements which are very favorable to, uh, uh, and speaking in favor of that particular uh, theme. And since we're not talking about policy recommendations, but we're talking about policy menu, that means that there, is, uh, there might be a policy that has worked in one type of countries, there is another type of policy worked in other type of countries, and so on. So they also there will not be controversy in terms of negotiations, which policy is better than others. Simply there will be a sampling of, of uh, policies and, and, and so on. So from that perspective, I think uh, this is a very uh, good proposal coming out from ICC.
Avri, please. Thank you. Uh, I have one question which is more looking for clarification. I don't really understand what a policy menu is. It seems that other people do have a much clearer understanding because they're supporting it. And, and I, I was asked by someone off list, could I explain it? And I went, uh, no. So, so perhaps I would like, in terms of the intersessional work, I like the idea of being able to come out with at least one output. Uh, what I kind of am, am sort of concerned about is the sort of spending a lot of time picking the issue that I'll get it as opposed to starting immediately with several work threads and then at some point seeing how far we've gotten and seeing which ones are worth focusing on to take through all the way to an output. So perhaps it's just a slightly different modality of as opposed to deciding which theme, start working on several perhaps and, and see which are ready at some designated intercessional document date. Uh, and I'd like to put that in there for consideration. Thanks. Thank you, Avery. I, I think I, I answered your question uh, right before you asked it. Uh, what is the policy menu? I said that, that this is a menu. When you go to the restaurant, you get a menu. You get a starters, you get a main dish, you get a dessert. So, and depending on your situation, meaning how hungry you are, how, in what mood you are, would you like to have a fish or, or, or meat, you pick up your menu. So the same thing here, we, we, we are talking about uh, preparation of, of policy menus that has helped uh, different governments, uh, different countries rather than governments to bring uh, internet at the level as they are. And uh, uh, those who are interested in bringing, I mean, improving the, the state of their internet and improving access and improving uh, sort of uh, use, they go to that menu and said, okay, my country is very similar to that one and they succeeded in this way. Oh, these are very good ideas and, 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 and so on. Since we're not talking about negotiations, if we would say uh, uh, a policy for next million uh, for next billion online. So that would imply, okay, there is a one policy, let's negotiate which is the best one. Certainly we would not get anywhere with, with that. But uh, bringing different types of, of policies on the table and, and uh, uh, sort of explaining them in, in a way that everybody understands, I, I think that this, this is what I understand is a policy menu. Uh, uh, Juan Alfonso. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> I think I'm being a little bit reiterative here, but how I see this that is that the intercessional has to have the same themes as the main session. How I see it, if I was the one planning this, like a chess game, you know I'm a chess player. In a chess game, you first have to plan what you want to do. What are you aiming? You're aiming for a win, you're aiming for a draw, and then you select your opening, then how do you transfer to the middle game and then to an end game that hopefully will be to your advantage. Here we have to plan similarly through in this year. And I, I will suggest to first select the theme or sub-themes of the event, and then to organize all the work regarding there, and to engage in whatever way possible all the process in between and regarding the intercessional is to propose to produce a paper you were asking what kind of paper it's an issue paper an issue paper that could help the discussion on the IGF the IGF is a very good place for a wide discussion but it needs to be organized and only to have tangible resource let me put you an example just an example I, I don't want to preempt the theme, but suppose that we select the theme of economy. Economy has many sub themes or many things like that. For instance, this wall garden a variety now of access that is offering for the internet, you, we could put in the issue paper uh, for discussion in the IGF. How do you feel of this wall garden uh, 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 access to the internet? Do you consider this a this is a good evolution of the Internet because we're talking about the evolution of the Internet. 
and, and like that. Other, how do, do we finance social interest websites in developing countries where we don't have uh, advertising industry to finance a free access website? How do finance that? Another thing, uh, should you think that the revenue of selling the words of our languages should we pass around to the rest of the Internet community? Those would be issues that you should be in an issue paper. Regarding, for instance, cybersecurity, there are many things also. Privacy, you, you could put questions regarding privacy. So I suggest that that's the output of the intercessional issue paper in preparation. That is a common uh, thing in, in many uh, uh, events in the, in the world, that expert or somebody prepares the issue paper that to frame uh, the discussion. Uh, but I think that we need to have coherence with the intercessional and the themes. If you are very keen of this menu, I, I don't really like that uh, menu thing, but if that's everybody likes the menu for the intercessional, then make the menu the theme for the, for the IGF in 2015. But we need to have the same both places. We cannot spread ourselves thin, and then we, as you said, try to do more things that we can really do. So thank you, uh, Jivan. Thank you. I'm personally somebody who prefers to get together with friends and have dinner uh, at home and somebody else's home. And before that, we all go perhaps to the market and pick our groceries, each of us, and then make dinner. One person makes a salad, another person. So I'm, I'm usually a person who likes these kind, this kind of approach, not necessarily to go to a restaurant with a few uh, with a fi fixed uh, menu. But um, I understand the, the logic behind the menu as well. Now, uh, intercessions may be a good way to address calls for better outcomes, um, perhaps, but it's not necessary to frame it so much now. I think that we, we have to allow for other priorities to crop up. And I see a line clearly uh, uh, connecting the intercessional uh, discussion and concept and the uh, policy menu. Uh, that's clear by now, the third day. Um, but I think that we should keep our minds open and the, what times of outcomes can uh, come up out of the IGF and the uh, MAG in particular. Thanks. So thank you. I, I think we're now getting in, in rounds already. Uh, let, me, let me then ask uh, Benedicta to convene uh, informal sort of consultations uh, at 2 o'clock here uh, in, in the room, but not going beyond 3 because then we will start our, our session. Um, for those who are interested, please uh, come and join uh, this, this discussion. Uh, ideally, we, we would uh, have uh, a suggestion for a theme and sub-themes. Uh, as a result, please use also uh, one hour from one to two uh, in the groups to discuss these, uh, these things. Uh, and um, uh, uh, I will ask you to uh, report back at the beginning of the, of the meeting, but without entering any more in, in the uh, in the further discussions. So um, let, me, uh, let me also uh, uh, say that please think about uh, the uh, intersessional work in terms of uh, working groups. We have yesterday, we have identified that there would be one working group on uh, sort of self-evaluation, ad adding uh, information to the report which was done by similar working group in 2013. Uh, preparing input for the CSTD um, uh, meeting in May. Then uh, we think about who would be interested in uh, joining working group on intersessional work modality definition because we need to have somebody who is sort of proposing and, and uh, uh, animating that, that part of work. Also who would be willing to coordinate um, the uh, best practice uh, best practice uh, tracks. Uh, the question is whether we do one uh, working group for all on, or uh, a number of working groups depending on the, on the titles, I mean number, number of topics we are addressing. Uh, and now I would like to move uh, to the uh, agenda item related to uh, workshop, uh, workshop uh, uh, selection criteria and mechanisms. You <coughs> Yes, Mark. Thank you, Chair. I'm uh, sorry to interject at this point. I just wanted to know when you're proposing to consider 
um, interaction with the Net Mondial initiative. Is that on the agenda for today? Uh, I thought yeah, we were I'd, going to I'd, do that I'd, at some I'd, point. I'd, Thank you. Depend, depending how, how coherently we will we will um, uh, proceed uh, and how much time uh, other items will take, but that that should be uh, we should discuss it uh, at the end of the of the meeting for sure. The online participant. No, I'm sorry, that's not. I was trying to indicate subtly that we have also offered to deal with improvements in uh, online participation yeah, during is, the intersessional. Is, sorry, that is in that is in the in the program. No? Yeah, let's let's go okay. now uh, one one by one. We have we have. Um, uh, three topics to uh, to talk through, and that is workshop selection criteria, main sessions, preparation for main session guidelines, and uh, best practice forms, dynamic coalitions, open forums, and then op online participation would fall in that part. So um, you uh, you received the uh, the document which was developed last uh, last year. Uh, on selection uh, criteria and mechanisms. And um, I would like to ask Fiona, Fiona, I would like to ask Fiona, maybe you could, you could uh, very briefly introduce the, the work you, 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 you did last time on the uh, selection criteria and mechanisms and see whether we need to uh, fine tune uh, this uh, methodology uh, or not. Please, Fiona. Yes, thank you, Yana. So I'll just do a high-level presentation, um, the details of which people can read in the document that I think uh, Shengatai distributed, but it's also posted on the IGF website. Um, so last year, um, the group decided that we would try to evaluate the proposals in much more of a systematic way, which was useful given that we ended up being so overly subscribed with um, 208, I think I think it was 208 requests for 80 or 90 some slots. And we identified a couple of clear priorities at the outset. Uh, first, we were looking to ensure that we had new participation and new participants, and that we gave some priority to um, those that were from the developing world as well. So instead of actually developing a flat scoring system, we developed a, a set of uh, criteria to consider, and that's uh, available on the website, and I think was and what Chengate sends around. And then each MAG member, when they were evaluating each individual proposal, considered that broad range of issues and came up with one cumulative score. So there wasn't an individual scoring of per item anymore, but sort of a cumulative score. And then based on that scoring system, um, when the MAG met um, in, in the sort of um, May, May or June timeframe, we went through and evaluated and selected the workshops. Um, part of the process, uh, Chengatai, I believe it was, actually anonymized the proposals so that when we got them to score, we, we weren't influenced by any particular proposals. And we also adopted a couple of clear um, rules at the beginning, which was if you were actually um, a, par a participant in the workshop or a named participant, you wouldn't score that proposal. Um, and we also uh, established some numbers and limitations about the number of proposals that could be submitted. I think it was three per institution. Um, and so I think the question is, um, we need to have a conversation about what worked and what didn't work in that process that Susan and I uh, put together. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I think she's probably not participating at this moment. I know she's been weighing in later but because of the time difference. Um, I know she sent a note to the MAG list last week with some suggested questions. So we need to identify what worked and what didn't and if there are any new factors we need to consider. Um, I would offer that I, th I do think that we did have a challenge that when we actually scored the proposals and then we actually looked at the proposals, we still had a fair number of proposals that were that scored quite highly that were duplicative. And I think, um, you know, we had left it to Chengatai and others to call applicants and to ask them to merge, and I don't think people were always willing to merge. So I think if we are looking for a more breadth of participation and if we are looking for a broader range of participation, we, we might need to tackle that in terms of approach going forward. But I think as a high-level presentation, that was the basic gist of what we tried to do um, last year. So thank you very much. I would now uh, open the uh, floor for uh, any comments uh, specifically, but specifically on, on this selection uh, criteria and process. Uh, from my side, what, uh, what I can say, the um, uh, criticism that I heard was uh, that the, um, there was not sufficient explanation why workshops were uh, uh, rejected. 
uh, and and maybe that that should be uh, uh, factored in somehow, though it is uh, might might be a huge task. Uh, Avri, please. Thank you. Yes, uh, obviously I wasn't on the, the mag last year, but I did watch this process quite closely from you know e externally from online. And, and a couple things, first of all, occurred to me, and, and, and we saw, first of all, while we may have wanted to, 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 to devalue uh, panels, basically we ended up with, with, with many panels. So, so the marking system we had, and in fact, we saw that many people, in order to sort of raise up their proposal, had lists of panelists proposed because there was a requirement for panels who hadn't even been consulted. So I, I think that one thing we, we need to deal with in terms of looking at it this time is to certainly not encourage people to make up panelists, but perhaps not even to include panelists. And in fact, if we want to limit the number of panel type work sessions we have, we need to do some of that. The other thing I noticed is to make the, the, the marking system work, it took some, some very clever ad hoc um, decisions on how to proceed down the gradations to, to actually get to something balanced. That, that the classification system in itself did not really produce a balanced it, it took the chair sort of saying, okay, let's, let's do it this way and let's take two of these and three of those and, and proceed down. And so I think while, while I understand why that had to happen, the, the classification itself should do a better job of, of bringing those things out so it doesn't take so, some ad hoc ma magic at the end to make it work out. Thanks. Uh, thank you. I, I think, Avri, you're talking about two different things. One, one is the guidelines for submitting proposals, how they should be prepared, and that maybe there should be clear distinction between panels, workshops, roundtables, uh, and maybe we need to do a little bit of uh, also teaching that uh, organizers uh, uh, well understand what, what is the difference between a panel or roundtable or, 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 or workshop or seminar. Uh, so that, that, that would refer to the, uh, more to the uh, fine-tuning uh, preparation guideline, uh, sort of guidelines that, uh, that also exist, right? Uh, and, and, um, but with the evaluation and scoring, we had an option. We had an option to take uh, the average mathematical uh, score and say, okay, these are above the line. Uh, and that's it, without any further consideration. But since, uh, the, among other principles, we're sort of uh, uh, promoting first-time participants, uh, favoring uh, uh, developing countries, and all, all this, I mean, that makes a that makes bit, bit of a sort of uh, uh, balancing and challenging that we need to do a discrimination and bring up some from, from, from the bottom. Uh, uh, Virat, please. So first on the question, Mr. Chairman, that you have um, spoken about uh, with regards to transparency, and I explained yesterday in great detail uh, for those of who are new that almost every single step, well, every single step, not almost, was in the public domain. But to your point about we don't know how our proposal was rejected, um, you know, I, before I was a MAG member, I had a proposal rejected, and I'm um, Sorry, you're proud to say, I'm not sure which one. It was the highest loser. Um, and, and, and so I, I know the pain of, uh, of, uh, of being 0 0.03 below the cutoff. Um, and, and then think about how I would have had a panel of my friends there. So here is, here is what we could do. We, could, we, we already convey the basis of the scores. We already convey that there is high scores for formats, for first timers, for developing countries. There are scores for gender balance, regional balance, stakeholder balance, and to suit the themes. So all this is already there. I suppose what we could do is then put out the rankings. I'm not sure if the Secretary does that, but we could just put out the ranking of all the 208 proposals 
because the average cutoff mark is determined by the total that go in, which is last time was 90, and I think the average cutoff was 4.43 or something like that, and that's how the cutoff is determined. We could put that score out for every proposal and people could see. There is no way you can mess with that score because 55 MAG members score individually. They don't sit in a room. By the time they arrive for the May meetings, the scores are already compiled based on individual submissions of MAG members. So there is no scope of getting together and rejecting or accepting a proposal. Then we bring about 110 proposals for discussion. And there are some which are scoring just below the lines but are sort of moved up. And I just wanted to, I think if there is a question about why are we rejected, we could put out those scores based on the criteria that is already established. And I think Fiona just made a whole presentation of how that's done, if that helps. On the panel issue that Avery has read in the past about you know, having it more, um, I think we will have to then, I'm not sure we can ban panels, but we'll have to look at a way where we will have to convey that only 20 out of the 80 proposals that will make it will be panels. So if you're looking for panels, you're going to compete with the only 20 that will make it. So we can probably just put add-on points there, and then the MAG will have to decide how to reduce the number of panels. Because last year, as I had mentioned to you, out of the 208 proposals that we received, when I started marking them, I had put zero marks for panel, and I had to give zero marks to everyone, because everyone had a panel. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, you put in a couple of big names, and you know that's how it goes in. So I suppose we'll have to then limit panels and convey that, that only 20% of all the workshops will be panels. Again, I think the host country must let us know whether they can provide eight of the 10 rooms as round tables, because if that's the format that we want, then I hope the rooms can be sort of set up in that order. We shouldn't go into a theater style seating with a panel. And the last part, which is actually a pain for everybody every year, is mergers. And here is the difficulty with mergers, and I request the MAC to give ideas, because at least we have failed to do this. When we request a successful proposal to merge with a proposal that was very close to the borderline, and I was one when I wasn't on the MAG, as I said, the winning proposal or the, or the proposal that made it, A, doesn't have the incentive, and B, doesn't have the ability to merge because they already have seven confirmed speakers or eight confirmed speakers, so they can't put 14 confirmed speakers now. And that's the challenge of merger. So we should either do away with the process of merger or somebody needs to come up with a better idea because two years in a row, we have not succeeded with, uh, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not a big success. Some people do, and then, and then there's a lot of complaints to the secretariat and to the MAG members on why didn't we merge. So I just want to caution us on the panels and the merger. But I'm happy to suggest, from my point of view, that we can put the scores out so that everybody knows how they scored. And actually, in, finally, the MAG only discusses 20 borderline proposals to bring them up or leave them down, because there are 80 which make it clear on the, based on the score. Thank you. So thank you very much. Maybe we need to describe that uh, mechanics that we take, uh, that we take uh, sort of 50 or whatever, depending on, on the num number of available slots, and put them automatically based on scoring, and then explain how we do the, the, the evaluation of the rest and how we discriminate and, and, uh, and why we do so. Uh, Fatima? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Fatima for the record. I have a question, and I'm sorry if I lost this. Uh, do we have the same rules done this year uh, where, uh, that say that MAG members cannot uh, present or submit a proposal of workshop, and the organizational members can submit three proposals only? And one comment, I think if we decide that uh, we approve, for example, seven Pro, uh, workshop proposal. Uh, I would like that we respect that uh, limit of uh, workshop approval uh, because then we see some side meeting, for example, that we didn't approve as a member and then appear in the agenda of the um, ICF. And also I agree with the criteria that Fiona explained and that we work this year. Thank you. 
So thank you. I, I think that these limitations are uh, reasonable, and they were introduced uh, based on uh, uh, previous previous uh, practices, which were not uh, overly positive. And I think, personally, I, I would prefer to, to continue uh, follow, following them. And uh, so I will now. I have uh, Subi, Cheryl, uh, Flavio, uh, uh, Julia, uh, Marilyn, and Fiona at the end, and then please, Subi. Thank you, Janis. Um, Janis, I, I think the first thing on this agenda item was looking and revisiting the workshop evaluation process. Um, where I could speak to the question of panels, um, but I'll come to that after I'm done with the criteria. I think we made a great progress in terms of revisiting what were the parameters, and this conversation has taken place for a variety of reasons. We wanted new voices. We wanted to enhance uh, developing country participation. At the moment, I see nine criteria. There was a process of initial screening, as Fiona mentioned, um, but these nine criteria, I think, have scope for being coalesced further into about seven, where especially the point of speakers, um, when we ask people even in initial screening to mention whether they have emails or contact details and we're evaluating proposals on the basis of confirmed speakers, I would argue that those people who've um, and we've often been accused of being a club of insiders. There is a lot of effort that has been made over last year, this year, and the previous years to do away with that. Um, if we continue to put that as an important criteria, um, it naturally puts first-time proposers at a disadvantage while evaluating all the 200-plus proposals. We've seen that there are requests where they're actually asking the Secretariat or MAG members to suggest different speakers or give us contact details. So uh, that is one strong proposal. They could mention their intent, they could mention some names, but that is not one point where they should be done away with at the entry level or the threshold. So that is one criteria I'd like to see revisited. Um, on the overall scoring process, looking at all these nine criteria that exist from last year and giving a cumulative score of one to five, uh, while as a MAG member I'm reading a proposal and I'm trying to evaluate, this is a very complicated mathematical formula that I have failed to achieve. How do I balance and evaluate and score a single proposal remembering how it did on all these nine parameters? Um, before 2013, and these are excellent parameters, we did have a process where each of these criteria was scored individually on a Likert scale from zero to two, and then a cumulative score was the right dad. I prefer that process because I see that as more transparent and reflective of how a workshop proposal did on each of these criteria. So that's uh, my first intervention on the criteria process. And the second is a firm insistence on submitting a report at the end of the process on panels. Um, I, I strongly disagree that we as a MAC can limit a 20% cap on panel proposals. When we consistently talk about growing back to the crowd, the community, it is important to respect what workshop proposals want. Um, we have done a lot of work. We've even put out session descriptions. Uh, there's even points, additional points for new and innovative formats. We are offering advantages and we are offering positive affirmation for innovating in formats. But if there are people who like to propose panels, I do not think we can penalize them on that basis. Um, on mergers, I completely agree it hasn't worked. It is very difficult to make it work because you cannot force someone in retrospect to go out and collaborate with somebody else whose um, identity, ideology, uh, also layout you might not agree with. Um, and my last point is on capacity building and the role of MAG members as mentors while these proposals are being put out. I think all of us can volunteer to take up and work with some proposals. Um, and I support the idea that we retain the agreement that we reached on, that MAG members refrain from submitting proposals themselves um, and help mentor build capacity for new workshop proposals. That'll be all from for now, from me. So thank, thank you, Subi. Uh, Cheryl? Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I actually uh, submitted proposals to IGF Bali and also to IGF Istanbul. And so I definitely saw the difference. Um, and so just a thank you to everyone who worked on the criteria and worked on improving the process. There definitely was uh, a noticeable change from both years, at least uh, from my perspective. I do agree that uh, it was difficult to understand how to merge the workshop. And so I offer two possible suggestions for improving that if it's decided that the MAG wants to keep this practice of merging. I think you might let uh, submitters know up front that there is, their workshop could be uh, subject to being merged so that they know right up front your workshop may be merged as a precondition so that they're put on notice of that. And then secondly, the merger itself is difficult. Uh, we tried. We, we were working with the other group that it was suggested, but again, the different panelists, the different moderators, how do you pick and choose? What might help the process is to have an actual MAG member or perhaps a small group of MAG members help to facilitate that synergy or help to facilitate uh, the creation of that new workshop then. Um, and then I have a question, just a point of clarity with respect to what we're discussing regarding panels. I'm, I'm not clear if we're saying that uh, we're telling people you, we are only accepting a certain number of panels. So if we get, say, 100 offers for panels, do we just automatically reject those proposals? Or do we take those proposals and then communicate back with the, uh, the the proposal writers to say, look, we have too many panels. Would you consider forming a roundtable, or would you consider forming one of the newer, uh, more innovative, uh, I guess, setups that we might be attempting? Um, so I just put that out there for, as food for thought. Thank you. So thank you, Cheryl. No, I, I think that this is a subject of um, of guidelines for for preparing. I, I, I personally, I don't see that we can uh, arbitrarily say. Don't, no more panels here. Many people don't understand actually the difference between panel and, and, and roundtable. Um, uh, there is another uh, uh, question that I would like to put on the table, and that, that is uh, privileges of the host nation. Remember, we had a number of proposals last year coming out from, from host nation uh, that uh, were put in, in the agenda, and that um, uh, raised num number of concerns and questions uh, by the community uh, and uh, maybe we would need to add uh, clear guidance uh, in this respect that either we accept let's say two or three proposals which follow the same uh, sort of uh, methodology and, and, and principles as any other from the host nation and that is not evaluated in line with any other or we just clearly say host nation should go through the same process, submitting proposals and so on, and there is no any privileges in that sense. I think that also is something we need to uh, consider and, and, and add to our guidelines to be very clear uh, up front. Uh, Flavia, what do you think about it? No, I'm not putting you on the spot, sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to joke. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so I would like to, to, to talk about the, the evaluation of the workshops. So uh, first thing, uh, it's, uh, I support the idea already mentioned by Subi uh, that uh, we should uh, uh, try to give scores for the individual aspects of the evaluation uh, uh, spreadsheet so that we do not give only a, a global uh, final score uh, because this is really difficult. I think that uh, this is very usual in, in, in many, uh, for instance, conferences of the scientific community that uh, we have those uh, spreadsheets for evaluation where we uh, even have weights for the individual aspects. We may decide which are the, the things here uh, that are more important than others. For instance, we want to, to, to give a priority for first-time uh, proposers or for uh, diversity, gender or geographic uh, diversity. So we can put different weights for uh, the individual aspects 
And then if we give a, a score for each aspect from zero to two or to three, uh, the, the, the final score will be weighted and not simply uh, adding uh, linearly the, the, the individual scores. So I think this would uh, add to the, the, the evaluation process. And I also think that this, uh, the, 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 the aspects are fine, yeah, these eight, nine aspects here, but they are of different natures. There are things that are related to diversity, so whether the, the, the proposals are first-time proposals, whether they, they represent diversity, gender, geographic, and so on, develop, if they come from developing countries. This is one uh, set of uh, uh, evaluation criteria. There is a different one that's related to contents. If the, the proposal is well thought and, and, and true and complete, if the topic is relevant to the internet governance, uh, 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 if the, 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 there is specificity in the problem or question or challenge to be addressed and so on. So we can group the criteria, have two or three different groups, and then decide which uh, weight we should give to each of these groups. We want to put more emphasis on diversity than on contents or, or, or vice versa. So it's uh, still to be uh, uh, decided. If we have this uh, working group for, for taking care of this, maybe this working group should uh, consider these things that uh, try to, to balance weights of the different uh, aspects to be evaluated here. And I think we should uh, give, uh, publicize the, the complete scores for the individual aspects so that people see why they had a final score of three or four because they have been evaluated so and so for each individual score. Another thing is that we should try to balance uh, the workshops among the sub-teams that we will decide. So if we have three or four or, or five main sub-teams, we should try to avoid too many or too few workshops on a given sub-team. So this is another cri criterion for, for evaluation of the workshops. Uh, of course, we should give room for workshops that do not fit directly into the sub-teams if they are relevant. So this is uh, orthogonal to the other uh, evaluation of the individual proposals, how we balance the workshops among the sub-teams. So I, I would like very much to, to, to be involved directly with this uh, criteria and maybe volunteer for this working group. So thank you very much, Fabio. Uh, Julia? Uh, thank you, Yanis. Uh, my name is Julia Morinitz. Um, I would like to bring a few points. Uh, first of all, the difficulty of the um, of one of the evaluation criteria, which was the, obviously the um, the list of speakers, while it was uh, part of the gender perspective, uh, geography, and etc. But I think it was a real difficulty to have. Well, from time to time, I had personally difficulty uh, how to evaluate um, in terms of we had a list of confirmed speakers, or, and for other workshops, it was not confirmed, and I. I found that a number of workshops proposals was, uh, were very good, actually, and we had any confirmed speakers. And from others, it was a confirmed speaker. So what I'm trying to bring here, I think we really need this as an information, at least before the May meeting, uh, to have uh, just gender, geography, without any uh, names, practically, or just as an information, but not as an evaluation point. Because the workshop proposal could be good, uh, but uh, people, it's very difficult to have confirmed speakers at this time. Um, now, the second point I would like to support, and I support what Virat proposed concerning the, um, for the clarity purposes, actually to have the um, scoring uh, being uh, published online, and it would, will be very clear for, for, the, for the rejected workshops, uh, why it was rejected, and et cetera. Um, I also would like to bring something else that I uh, mentioned yesterday. I think we need to strengthen and to encourage the evaluation process, the assessment of the workshops after Brazil meeting. What I mean uh, just to encourage participants at the workshop to evaluate uh, and have a kind of format of, of framework how to evaluate the workshop. So the next year, for, them, for example, 2016, it will be easier uh, for MAC to make the evaluation process of the workshop proposals. 
also on the uh, concerning the merging of workshops. Personally, I don't really agree that um, we don't need to encourage the merge. I think this is difficult. I have a personal experience, and what, it was a good experience. We um, uh, succeeded in merging, and I think it was a very uh, it was a great proposal on uh, on having a workshop, uh, sorry, a work group on how to facilitate the merge. And I think we really need to encourage this. Thank you. So thank you, Yulia. Uh, we have further further requests. Uh, Son Jung and Fiona, I will keep you for the for the for the end because you know I will ask you to continue working together with Suzanne. I'm giving a preview. <laughs> uh, Song Jung, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, actually, I was um, uh, thinking about um, the, the criteria of uh, scoring. Um, as far as I remember, I had uh, really difficulties uh, to find uh, panels, uh, various panels, because I was new there and also because I was the only, um, how can I say, the proposed, uh, I, I mean, in Korea, I was the, the only one who proposed a workshop. So I only has to depend on my uh, personal capacity to find the uh, panels. So, um, but you know, having too many panels uh, would not be helpful uh, for uh, discussion and debate. So um, I think, um, I don't know how to put this in English, but uh, if we can put more score on, um, on uh, some workshops uh, with a joint um, found founder, joint founder, I mean, uh, if Korean government uh, makes some uh, workshop with other stakeholders in you know, different regions, it could help uh, to make more subject uh, rich and also um, facilitate more um, uh, vivid and uh, more experienced um, discussion could be uh, um, produced in, in during the workshop. Thank you. So thank you. Marilyn, please. Thank you, Chair. My name is Marilyn Cade. My comments are going to start out by um, saying that, um, as some know, last year in my first year as a MAG member, I uh, championed very strongly the idea that MAG members should not be themselves developing and proposing uh, workshop meetings. We are those who evaluate workshops, and my past experience as a non-MAG member was less than optimistic, or, and perhaps I will stop at that, but that led me to make that uh, strong recommendation. I also think there needs to be a limitation, a ceiling, to the number of uh, workshops that any entity can um, suggest. In previous years, one organization proposed 15 and another 17. That creates a very unlevel playing field, particularly when an organization is very sophisticated and knowledgeable and well-resourced. So we, we set some limitations, and I hope we will stick with those. On the question of mergers, I did coach and help with mergers in Kenya, in Lithuania, in um, Baku and in Istanbul. From my corporate life, I will tell you my experience is there's no such thing as a merger, there's only an acquisition. And most of the parties that we ask to merge really felt that way. And I found when I tried to mediate and moderate, I really shared their experience. So my two suggestions on uh, merging are this. Start very early, have a neutral, non-involved MAG member to be a facilitator of the merger, and require giving on both sides. Otherwise, we only have acquisitions. We ask for merging because of the similarity in theme, or the similarity in speakers, or the similarity in perspective. So I'm not, I do support the idea that merging will be necessary, but I think we got to start very early. 
On the issue of panels, if you were from a developing country and you're a first-time proposer, um, dictating the format may be very unfair on our part. I think what we're looking for is a diversity of formats, but really the party who proposes the workshop needs to have the flexibility to design and rationalize that design. It helps tremendously, and many parties who submitted workshop proposals kept asking me for information about what, what is the space that is available. So the earlier we provide the room setup, the better and more helpful it will be to those who propose. Finally, I will just say I don't think having a hard and fast scale actually is fair. I think the MAG needs to go through the rating and then we have to apply some judgment in order to come up with the mix of balance of workshops across topics and, and inclusion of uh, new, pro new proposers and in particular proposals from developing countries. We also need to spend a little time at some point talking about the uh, open forums that are available to governments and to other entities, and that may be the way to address special um, proposals from the host. Thank you, Marilyn. There is also a hostile takeover that you didn't mention. Uh, uh, Sylvia, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I support the ideas of Cheryl and Marilyn uh, on merging issues. Um, I think the, the, the effort is worthy because we have several examples as evaluators or, or being participants of different kind of contests and also in projects like FP7. Merges are done uh, and we have to take into consideration that mainly are, is an acquisition, not just a merge, but it is possible. And um, so uh, we have to consider in, in working of the guidelines, as you say. So maybe we, we, there could be a group that could uh, improve these guidelines on this issue. And also another question is if the, um, I agree also with the ICC basis on the next billion connected. Shouldn't we include some kind of, uh, um, I mean, mention in, 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 in the scoring about this new billion connected? Thank you. So thank you. Uh, not specifically, I think one of the criteria is uh, how the theme, uh, how the proposed uh, uh, workshop resonates with the existing or identified themes. Uh, Kosi, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. I think that the criteria that we defined last year already uh, is a very good start. All we need to do now is look at the aspects that need to be readjusted. Uh, and a few that I think we need to take into account, well, last year we already said that MAC members shouldn't make proposals. And then we said they can make proposals, but they shouldn't evaluate the proposals they've made. Uh, and that was already a difficult balancing act. I propose then that members of MAG not be both a judge and jury, that they be isolated, separated from the decision-making process here, uh, from those who are going to make the decisions uh, on uh, that issue and those who are going to have a panel it, it tell us about uh, uh, if well tell us if mag members are going to be on the podium are going to be moderators uh, we have uh, I think also to deal with problems dealing with the uh, reports on the different uh, workshops we're going to have perhaps different panelists but one of the things that a moderator has to do is to report to the secretariat and maybe using two rapporteurs should be authorized for each uh, panel uh, and would they have the necessary means to do their job I would propose that members of MAG uh, contribute to helping provide this information they act well perhaps as volunteers at least one of the rapporteurs be a volunteer then coming from MAG 
And I think this would allow us to have a good collection of data. Now, talking about merging uh, workshops or not, it's true that they often have similar themes. For example, the example, the example of uh, ZZF on a regional basis. Sh should we have one for Africa, one for Af Africa, one for Europe? Maybe we could uh, simplify by having one single room and all of them take that opportunity to present what they've been doing specifically in one single sitting. But splitting them up into different workshops, uh, well, instead of going region by region, maybe the Secretariat of uh, IGF could uh, take care of this. Uh, for those workshops that we've been informed of, uh, we could say, Here's the focal point for the regional uh, the workshops. And uh, in this way, international organizations could get their messages across, knowing where they had to go. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Before going to uh, online participant Izumi, I will ask uh, Jivan to take the floor briefly, and then Mark, and then Fiona, and then we will move on to the next item. Izumi, uh, sorry, Jivan, please. I just want to set it, uh, uh, have it set in the record uh, in bold that I agree with Marilyn completely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Izumi? Izumi, are you with us? So if you're with us, please indicate that. Uh, in the meantime, Mark. Yes, thank you, Chair. Just uh, Mark Ava, UK Government. A couple of suggestions um, to throw into this uh, discussion. Um, first of all, um, we should encourage uh, proposers to consider the options for the kind of um, uh, event in, in the IGF. So instead of talking about workshop proposals, we, we might change the word workshop to to um, uh, embed the idea that they have an option. You know, it could be a, a it could be a workshop with a panel, a uh, discussion with or a discussion with facilitators, a roundtable, flash session, and so on. So this gives us more um, maneuverability in terms of ensuring a, a rich program and so on. Secondly, with regard to to panelists, uh, perhaps the guidelines could. Um, signal to proposers that they should be encouraged to um, consider um, running their proposal past their national or regional IGF so that uh, they would more likely secure uh, participation by experts reflecting diversity and gender balance. Uh, to help, especially newcomers uh, to this process, to help them come up with a proposal that has a more developed um, a, um, uh, element in terms of participation, be it in a panel or a round table and so on. So uh, for that, we need to signal to the national and regional IGFs that they um, uh, should undertake some kind of advisory role for proposers for events at, at, at the IGF. Um, so those are my uh, two suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I see that Fiona is taking good note. Izumi, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I find um, the comment made about uh, differentiating the content element and the framework um, about um, how the a workshop is um, submitted is interesting. So uh, considering whether the content of the workshop is good and set certain criteria for that. And then also another uh, element is looking at whether it uh, meets certain criteria such as geographic diversity, uh, gender balance, etc. So while um, I don't want to overcomplicate the criteria, it may be, int uh, it may be worth um, thinking of um, categorizing which criteria is uh, relevant to content and which uh, criteria is relevant to uh, 
meeting actually the framework of um, the workshop itself. That's one observation. And regarding the comment uh, made uh, about being new and not being able to reach out to other um, uh, speakers or panelists uh, to uh, meet the criteria for the proper geographic balance, etc. I found um, one of the suggestions made by Cheryl, I believe, on the uh, mailing list was interesting about have some kind of common uh, resource for suggested speakers. Um, that might be something that um, may be worth exploring. Maybe not necessarily in terms of having uh, individual speakers, but maybe um, list organizations which are willing to introduce speakers for a certain topic, for example. And uh, lastly, regarding um, the point about accommodating um, session from host country, I think we have to be quite uh, careful in its consideration. But I'm basically open to the idea of accommodating session from host country as long as the criteria is clearly defined and, uh, uh, for example, such as the contents are in line with the spirit of the IGF. I think that's a master condition if we accommodate it. And also the number of uh, slots is also predefined and we don't just uh, keep on increasing um, the contents from the host country. That's my comment for, for now. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Izumi, for your comments and also addressing the, my question about uh, clarity about the privileges of host country in terms of uh, uh, content uh, proposals for the IGF. Uh, Peter and then Fiona, and then we're moving to the next topic. Peter, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning. <clears throat> I'd like to continue this uh, discussion uh, about improving the content of the meetings by starting a conversation uh, which we can carry on online after this meeting, uh, about uh, post-event evaluation of each session. Uh, we don't seem to do anything except require some people to file a report, but there's no evidence that I can see that the report is actually used uh, except as a check. Um, what we need to be doing is measuring uh, sessions against the proposer's own goals at the time that they submit the proposal, measuring them against the theme of the IGF itself. Uh, this is standard relatively standard fare for most recurring conferences. We can prepare evaluation sheets for people to use in the sessions. And the reason why people do this is because it provides useful input into preparing the next session, uh, identifying uh, popular and useful topics, good presenters, and, and so on. So I, I'd like to start that conversation. Uh, it may be that the most appropriate place is to add that to the working group that's prepared the front end evaluation. It's the logical conclusion. But just to announce this seemed to be the appropriate time, that's a conversation I'd like to start. Thank you. So thank you, Peter, for this proposal. Uh, Fiona, a lot of things to take into account. Yes, thank you very much, Giannis, and for everyone that um, provided input. Um, I would just recall that a lot of the conversation we're having today we've had before. When um, I originally proposed criteria for the workshop, I actually tried to do what Flavia suggested, which is this very detailed criteria per element, and the group rejected that. That doesn't mean we can't have that conversation again and maybe it's time to consider doing that. But one of the reasons we came up with sort of these general eight or nine criteria and let the MAG members do a cumulative score is people wanted flexibility. Um, so I understand that does cause some confusion to those that are actually being scored. So we need to discuss that as we go forward. But just to refresh that for folks, we did actually try to do element by element evaluation on a scoring system and no one accepted that last time. So. Um, with all that said, um, I'm happy to sort of work with Susan and come back to the group on the list with the proposal for how to move forward. Um, my understanding, just so I understand what the assignment is to the group and anyone that wants to participate, obviously, please let Susan and I know or just sign up on the list. Um, we need to look at also the guidelines for submission because they'll have to be ref edited to reflect any changes we make. And then Peter's idea of post-event evaluation we can add as we look at the full life cycle. Um, but I think what, a few things we need to consider is are the goals still the same? Are we still looking for new participants, new formats? And we can talk about that on the list. Um, look at the scoring format and the criteria and confirm it. And then address this issue of how do we actually do the um, mergers. Um, I do think it's probably a bit unfair last time that we left the Chengatai and the IGF Secretariat to try to make people merge things, and I'm not sure that worked well. So we should look at that. Um, I, w I do think there's three sort of threshold issues we probably need to decide as a group. And I don't know if we need to do it here in Geneva before we leave, or at least before we get going. 
Um, one is what's the deadline for getting the announcement out so we can work backwards and actually plan. That would be helpful to know. Um, it would also be helpful to know now or as we're planning what's the maximum number of workshop slots we're looking at. I think it's important that those proposing understand there are limits and if people are being rejected it's within the confines of those limits. It's not anything else. And then I think we also need to agree as a group and it's better to do this in person um, or, and reconfirm or change it. What will be the limit on the number of workshops proposals from MAG members or uh, individual institutions? I just think those are sort of some three threshold issues that are important to frame the working group as it goes forward. So thank, thank you, Fiona. Uh, especially thank you for, for uh, sort of continuing working together with, uh, or leading the work together with Susan uh, on, on this topic uh, online. Uh, I think we, we should retain the same principle as we agreed and applied last time. It is no MAG member uh, s submits proposals and no more than three organizations. So it's three proposals per organization that was also supported in uh, during the debate. Um, uh, the, uh, personally, I also see one, one issue is enforcement of obligation of reporting. Uh, not necessarily all um, uh, workshop organizers uh, provide those reports after, after the sessions and, and that of course uh, impacts the quality of the uh, compilation of, of all, all the reports. So these, these issues we need to uh, address. So thank you. I think we can now move on to the next uh, agenda item and that is conversation about uh, uh, main slash focus sessions as yesterday was proposed that maybe we need to talk about uh, uh, focus sessions. Uh, we had very mixed, uh, mixed evaluation or, or feedback from uh, Istanbul and, and actually from every previous meeting as well. Uh, the difference in Istanbul because of the size of the room, there were, there were a number of uh, in, uh, rooms were relatively full. But uh, we had many uh, speakers, too many speakers, and too little interaction in those, uh, in those meetings. Um, I, I think it is very difficult <coughs> to, <coughs> uh, to, to provide a solution, but at least uh, my, my suggestion would be to work on kind of a guidelines for preparing those focus sessions. Uh, that would help uh, help uh, ourselves actually uh, to do that. Uh, these are focus sessions are the ones that are organized by, by the MAG and uh, basically they, they, they should be the ones where every workshop feeds in and provides input kind of, of uh, uh, collect, collector sessions. Um, so the floor, floor is open. We have another tw 12 minutes uh, to go in this session and then we may continue in the next one. Uh, Michael, Fiona, Michael please. Uh, this is uh, related both to this issue and the previous discussion. Do we have any information on how many people are looking at the webcasts of the different sessions? And is there a way to know whether the main sessions have gotten a lot of attention after the fact? Um, I really think that as we think about revising the criteria, we might want to look at these numbers and because it would be helpful to know if there are certain topics or certain types of sessions that attract a lot of echo after the fact. Chingata, do you have an answer? Sir? I can try and find out. Okay, we will see if, if we can get the uh, answer in two hours for the, for the beginning of the afternoon session. Uh, Fiona, please. Yes, thank you very much, Giannis. Um, I would strongly support the idea of, of guidelines. If nothing else, it helps with the institutional memory. There is a large rotation of MAG members every year, and I, I think to sort of ensure that we don't sort of start from scratch each time, I think it's a helpful construct. Um, I do think the challenges for this particular IGF, and this was played out on the MAG list over the course of the fall as, we were, as it was being organized, was that a couple of people did diligent work to try to organize these events, and I feel like they ended up having to do a lot of work by themselves, which is not how this is supposed to work. Um, so I think we need to sort of address that as a concept. But also, um, it would be helpful to sort of identify 
what the goals are of each session and the limits of the number of speakers. I know we end up with having to have a lot of speakers because we try to make each session meet all the elements of diversity, and I think that's probably challenging. If we keep doing that, we're always going to end up with a lot of speakers. And maybe we could look at this, this sort of the, the IGF more holistically and make sure that the, the diversity element is met with, if we look at the main sessions in total, not as individual elements, that may help with some of that. Because otherwise, we end up with having to actually, you know, tick the box to make sure you have people from every region and every gender and every group. And then you end up naturally with 20 people on a panel. And I don't think that's always the most constructive uh, format. So I would just offer that as a suggestion as we go forward. So thank you, Fiona. Uh, while while uh, Subi will be speaking, I would like to invite uh, uh, MAG members to think who would be willing to volunteer uh, to, to put pen on the paper and, and uh, work on those uh, or coordinate working on those um, uh, guidelines for organization of uh, focus sessions. Uh, Subi and after that, Marilyn. Thank you, Yanis. Um, I, I hope somebody, and, and I'm hopeful that it is the secretary, will be taking note of uh, online volunteers. I would like to volunteer to work on formulating guidelines. I think it is an excellent suggestion that Fiona put on one of the virtual calls for putting together main sessions. Um, I'd also like to assist Susan and Fiona on uh, contributing towards workshop evaluations and rating process while we're revisiting it. On the main sessions, um, I happen to co-organize with Marilyn Kate and 14 other volunteers from the MAG a main session last year. Um, I've submitted a detailed report to the Secretariat. There was also some conversation online about sharing these reports from funded MAG members. It would be helpful. Um, and there's expression of interest from others as well, if they would like to read. Um, there are concrete suggestions which also mention challenges and barriers that we experience as MAG members while organizing these sessions. Um, there were several innovations this year. It also included substantive engagement throughout the year and inputs from the community, volunteers from the community who were non-MAG members as part of the planning process while we were putting these sessions together. But main sessions remain one of the core tasks that MAG members perform other than evaluation and ratings. Um, I think it's important to realize as we go forward that there will be no blanket solution or a one-size-fits approach. It will depend upon the theme uh, or the sub-theme that we select for the main session. Um, while we go forward, there will be an, a requirement of experts or leadership input. Even when you have more speakers striving to achieve gender balance and diversity and meet with all the criteria, there are innovations and formats that we can achieve as organizers. Um, you do not have to absolutely keep interaction and Q&A for the last 20 minutes of a three-hour long session. It is important that after initial remarks, you open up the floor and you include the room as participants. So main sessions remain important and key, must relate to um, workshops and suggestions. Um, they should be spread out throughout the week and guidelines are very important because when we're putting out inputs or calls for inputs, there have been lulls. We understand that my members work on a voluntary basis, but those people who are trying to co-lead or facilitate also have similar challenges. So you cannot wait endlessly for inputs to be provided or given. Some kind of a guideline with respect to the tight calendar that we will maintain will be extremely helpful. And I would also like to see more MAG members in the room when these main sessions are taking place so that there is feedback. Um, assistance in terms of logistics from the host country with um, volunteers who speak and communicate in English is very, very important so that we do not need to have MAG members running around while the main session is on. This is important feedback. Um, and thirdly, the importance of more microphones in the room so that people can queue up. And these were lessons that we took this year from NetMundial. We, we reversed, we opened up the DEEPWA format 
we had a full room with standing room only and i agree with you yanis the room capacity determined that but i see this as success when we've had almost empty rooms for main sessions we've had full rooms with nobody leaving until the end of 3 hours and we've had active engagement from audience participation so if you do have main sessions which is well structured i do not think that there will be an issue about audience engagement participation from across the floor or the session formats um and we'll take the rest of the conversation online thank you uh, thank you subi marilyn <clears throat> thank you i want to echo much of what subi said i also want to note that i hear a little bit of disinformation sometimes from time to time with comments that uh main sessions were organized only by one or two mag members in case in our case as subi already said there were 14 other uh collaborators i think barad has already noted that he had a very large uh collaboration as well in planning the session so uh, perhaps um perhaps the problem is that uh there was not enough um cross communication due to lack of time because we were planning the main session uh relatively quickly i want to comment now on a, on something i said yesterday i said there is a difference between a plenary session where everybody comes together and a main room session which is designed to meet the interest of a large audience but not the entire audience and i think that is what we did successfully in turkey we had um standing room only in almost all of those main sessions and uh really i would also note that um people did stay there are excellent transcripts we captured a lot of information i'll be interested i think mike's comment is very relevant mike nelson's comment and that is you know to what extent are we seeing the replay of our um our videoed content and something for us to think about as the mag now i want to say something about um the relationship between workshops and main sessions if the theme of a main session is um being echoed in workshops then the feeder nature works but in a couple of cases such as in the internet governance um the evolution of the internet governance uh, landscape which Subi and I co-organized I think in fact we didn't have a lot of feeder workshops so we should probably talk more about uh, as we come up with the um the main sessions um do we how do we relate between workshops and the main sessions and i may have further comments later thank you uh i i'm not sure that there will be later i i was kind of hoping to conclude this uh, before before lunch uh because um i i think what we need to do is uh, just to define who will be uh, willing to coordinate the process uh and uh, then move this discussion online uh, uh Fati Fatima and then Flavio and maybe then we can finish Fatima please thanks um Mr. Chair Fatima for the record a brief comment i would like to repeat a similar comment that made yesterday uh, regarding the organization of the main session i consider that as mag member we have to uh, have a rule that uh, uh said that we can involve in the organization in one or two main session only because this year uh, there was a perception of capture of the organization of the main session by by a few mag members i would like that the next year this is not repeat again thank you thank you flavio uh, thank you yanis uh So I think the main sessions should be very well aligned with sub themes as far as possible so that we should limit ourselves to to three or four main uh, sub themes and so main sessions. Uh also it has been already said by others uh, the main sessions should have a very limited number of panelist speakers we had in Istanbul an excessive number of 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 speakers in in some main sessions. so we should provide enough time to provide real interaction with participants both local and remote so that we have real discussion uh, during the the session 
Of course, the linkage with the workshops is very desirable. We should try to see how we can best feed the main sessions with the contributions that come from the workshops. Uh, we have been discussing this uh, offline. Uh, maybe that we have a pl an adequate platform for having uh, online discussion and contributions prior to the event. If uh, we have, uh, when the workshops are defined, so that we have an online platform where contributions uh, uh, to the team of each workshop are given and discussion uh, is, goes on so that we can arrive in John Pessoa already with some uh, conclusions or uh, proposals or I don't know any kind of contribution that comes from the workshop that is uh, then refined during the workshops and then fed into the the, the main sessions and finally I, I would like also to volunteer for helping define the guidelines for the main sessions so thank uh, thank you um, so may I then uh, suggest that we conclude debate on this this item uh, we have heard that uh, there are two volunteers, uh, Flavio and Subi, who would uh, be willing to, to coordinate and put pen on the paper. And the deadline for um, uh, sort of finalization of this work uh, would be uh, a March, more or less the same uh, as for uh, evaluation guidelines, that we can apply them uh, when, uh, once we start uh, evaluation. Um, what, Fiona, please. Yeah, I think actually if we need to actually finalize the evaluation guidelines before we issue the call for workshops. So if we're going to issue the call for workshops at the end of January, early February, that needs to be done well in advance, because otherwise you can't communicate to people what they're going to be judged on. Uh, then, then thank you for this uh, uh, comment and precision. I, I, I agree. So then the deadline for, for your part of the work, it would be uh, much earlier. Uh, and um, Ginger, you would like to say something? We're really on last seconds of the meeting. Just very quickly, um, I agree and would like to join and just to add the aspects of remote participation in the criteria. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we, we discussed with, with Chingatai, then for every workshop, we will try to identify here at the meeting the key coordinators, the main coordinators. Usually we, we do two, that's easier. And then we will open a doodle pool where every GAC member, sorry, MAG member, will be able to uh, sign up for any of the wor workshops, uh, sorry, uh, for any of the, of the uh, groups individually. And then we will have a, a record uh, who, uh, who is uh, working on which, on which uh, uh, subjects. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, interpreters, for letting us a few minutes over the, the time. Uh, we are com coming back uh, for the uh, session, which will be interpreted at 3 o'clock. And we will start sharp at 3. So those who are interested in continuing conversation uh, on um, uh, the themes and sub-themes, please come here at 2. At 2 will be, will be remote participation facilities available, but no transcription. Transcription also will start at 3. So uh, please enjoy your, your lunch, and um, I see you at, back in the room at 3, Benedicto at 2, those who are interested. Thank you.